Welcome back, y'all. Today we're gonna be painting something very, very, very special. So special that I said very three times. I don't usually do that. It's a special occasion. You're in for a treat today. It's the canvas. Canvas is your best friend. Your best, best, best friend. Would you slap your friend in the face? Maybe if he stole your wife from you, like, like Paul did. But we're not drawing Paul. I am. You know, it has been one of those mornings. <laughs> oh my goodness. So let me try to get myself together. Good morning. Can you let me know if you hear me? If you're in the chat and you're watching, can you let me know if everything is working and running and sounding good? I am so sorry <laughs> for the technical difficulties. Oh my goodness. Wait what is happening <laughs> usually i've got everything up and running i've got everything plugged in and whatnot and right now it's just like that's okay we're here i'm good i see people say well joker i see whoa take woke my ears up yeah i am so sorry i I apologize profusely for that. And other people, uh, see, emotionally unstable amphibian, hello, saying hi, and this is that we're good, and craft work, craft says it's good, it's all good. So, <laughs> thank you. Oh my gosh, gosh. So, guys, good morning. How is everybody today? I hope that you slept well. This is the first Saturday in September. It's already September, guys. And I've been doing the Joys of Painting stream for a couple of months now, and it's been really fun and cool to go along this journey with you guys and uh, just just hanging out, creating artwork, and just exploring the world around us, really, just on the canvas. And it's just been so fun. But uh, speaking of like technical difficulties, like I said, it's been a morning. It's been like a morning for everybody. And so... Uh, my guest is having some technical issues herself. If you um, saw, of course, the thumbnail and you've been following me, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and following me like on Twitter and stuff like that, you will know that my guest is um, Megan from Noob Reviews. <laughs> I was like, girl, you good? We good? You, you coming? And she has been having power outages where she lives. She calls them little blips. And um, she apparently had another one this morning. Can you believe it? So like I always say, technology is great when it works. And so hopefully it's going to work for her. She is afraid that it might not. She's got to reboot and get everything started. So we're just going to kind of hang out for just a couple of minutes, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, just kind of see where we go from there. But if it is a joy, I speak from experience. That's right. Joker Voice was my last guest that I had on here uh, for my Joys of Painting experience. And uh, I've had some really, uh, really amazing guests. And I'm looking to get some more on here. Um, just just looking for some more YouTubers to teach them how to paint. And it's really fun. Like it's, it's, it's like, it's like an interview, but it's different because we're creating something. And I feel like it's a little bit more chill, more relaxed. I hope you guys are enjoying these streams. If you are, please be sure to give me a like 
um, for this video. You know, I tried to make sure that I'm bringing you some really cool content. Hopefully you enjoy my channel um, as a whole, bringing some new stuff this month. Excited to be able to take some time to really focus on everything. But so, you know, what do you do? Here's the thing. What do you do when you're a guest? You're supposed to be teaching somebody else how to paint and that person is not here. What do you do? Well, we just uh, carry on, carry on as uh, fun would would say. And I can always get started and show her how to do things when she's able to join and jump on. But you know, until then, you know, this is about hanging out, having fun. Let me just double check here on the cellular device. And McKinney Draws, good to see you. I, I hope to have you on my channel one day uh, for a, a painting stream. That You're saying that I was watching a stream when uh, you got monetized that I, I jumped on there and I was like, yeah, and we we're ch chatting, ch chatting in the chat back and forth, and he was saying that you know drawing that's primarily the the medium, but it's like I can teach anybody to paint, I really could. So I hope that they'll uh, jump on one time. We'll have to chit chat about that, maybe make that happen. That would be really really cool. But uh, anyway, so. Like I said, we're just going to go ahead and get started again. Please be sure to give me a like and a comment down. You know, if you're over there in the chat hanging out, just let me know that you're here. I'd love to say good morning and hello to you, or maybe even good afternoon, depending on where you live. Achilles Jones, hello. Hello. Hope you are having a great day. So like I said, my guest is running a little bit behind, and because of power outages, we don't know if she'll join us. We don't know. But uh, I, we're just going to go ahead and get started. But I do have this little clip. I was gonna say for when she was here. So since I can't interview her at the moment, if you don't know who Noob Reviews is, I'll let her tell you herself. I am a complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. <laughs> and that's the gist of it. Um, she was on a different channel where I co-host, we do movie reviews and uh, we had girls night. And um, I was asking her who she was, what she does. And um, that was a, the gist of it. So like I said, hopefully she'll be able to pop on. But she does do reviews on uh, comic books. Like, as she said, she is brand new to the community. Um, I need to borrow some of her stuff because I only know snippets myself. But she'll go out and get comic books and read them and give you her her take on what she's learned and she does like donald duck comics she does like x-men and superman all the different kinds and just to gain knowledge on what it is in the pop culture world so you can find all and uh excuse me you can find all of megan's information in the description box below. You can also follow her on Twitter. That's down below as well. And uh, as well as different outlets where you can uh, find me and buy some of my merch. If you've been or hanging around, you follow me on Instagram. Um, you follow me on Twitter and all of that good stuff. And you can also find my, my information on Etsy where I've got all kinds of cool stuff. I've got some new stuff in the merch shop. If you like Star Wars, if you like cute chibis, I've just created a brand new Darth Maul chibi that I am just in love with. And I plan to get him on the shelf soon because he's pretty cool. But uh, yeah, anyway, like I said, we're just going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> some people are telling me what time it is where they live. I appreciate you being here for some of you being so, uh, so late or early in the day, depending on all that. So if Megan were here, if she was here, uh, this is what we're going to be painting today. So she requested, and if you don't know how it works, when I invite people onto my show and they agree to come and I say, okay, here it is. You get to tell me what it is you would like to learn how to paint. And I will give you a mock-up. We'll try to do a revision. And I, just, I submit it to them and we get it going and I tell them the supplies and the color list. So they were asking, uh, she was asking about dragons for uh, Aragon. If you guys are familiar with the, um, <laughs> it's way too early, says drunk 3PO. Well, thank you for being here. Maybe you should, um, he was he was doing quite the walkthrough last night for park hopping. But uh, if you're not familiar with the 
character Aragon. It's a wonderful book series by Christopher Paolini. And Saphira is the main dragon, and she has a dragon rider, of course, and his name is Aragon, which is so interesting, you know, with all the Lord of the Rings talk and stuff like that going on. It is interesting how the main character there, if you will, Aragon, that's not one of the main characters. That's not actually his name. His name is Aragorn. This is Aragon. <laughs> but Aragorn doesn't really sound that great. No offense to Tolkien at all but i'm just saying aragon does sound way better so it's funny how even in the movie like as as much as they tried to respect the lore and all this kind of stuff in the film very few of them actually pronounce his name correctly there's a couple i think frodo does but uh anyway so we're doing aragon today okay and uh, we're gonna get started with this guy now when i presented this to megan i was like look um upon further review I do not want to paint this sky pastel pink. <laughs> I think this is kind of yicky. This is very like 80s pastel. So I am going to change the color of the sky as we paint. So here we go. Let me get my stuff started. I'm going to remove. First thing we need, of course, is the canvas. And I've got my cup of water, got my handy dandy rag and all of my brushes. I'm going to set Aragon over here. Get me a sip of my coffee. I'm trying to minimize the intake of sugar. And so I have reduced the sugar. Yiki, is that a technical term? It is an actual, actual word. I believe it is. I don't know. I have never looked it up in the dictionary. Maybe one day I will. But I've been trying to reduce my sugar. And so I've actually lessened how much sugar I put in my coffee. It's not been bad. I've been traveling quite a bit and I've been living off of hotel coffee. And so when I came back home, the coffee, of course, was very different. It was richer. It was weird, actually. I didn't really enjoy it. And <laughs> so I was like, well, this is the time then to try to change things up a little bit. It's not been bad. It's not been bad. All right. So got my canvas and paint horizontally. Got my colors over here. So instead of pastel pink, let me move this over a little bit. Instead of pastel pink, I am going to do maybe like a more of like a sunset. I think that will offset and look um, much prettier with the blue dragon than the pink sky. I don't know what happened. I was off my A game when I did that. So here you go. I'm grabbing my one inch flat brush here. Got my paints over to the side. All right, thinking it through because I was just going to go for it. I'm going to start off with my orange. So I'm just going to grab my red and dip into my yellow here. Nice ketchup and mustard thing going on over here. I'm just going to go ahead and mix the paints on the canvas just to see what we get. Get some more yellow. There we go. Back and forth. More. I'm going to get brighter as I go to the corner. At least that is the go. Here we go. So Besides hanging out with Tabitha on a Saturday morning, what is everybody's typical, their typical Saturday morning look like? I like to ask people what their Saturdays are like or refer, always refer to it because like when I started this painting stream idea, I was like, I want to catch that a vibe of Saturday morning cartoons. You know, it's just some wholesome, fun entertainment, somewhat educational. You're welcome. Um... <laughs> But uh, what do you guys normally do on a Saturday? Me, I, you know, I'm self-employed and I'm a creative person and I really don't take Saturdays off. I'm always doing something. It might be a little bit more relaxed or as far as my responsibility wise, like I don't necessarily push myself that much on Saturdays, but I still, I still do stuff. 
you know. Um, I also, I really don't like to not be productive. I, I, I understand that there's a time where you need to just kind of be still and just enjoy the moment. And I do, I try to do that actually every day rather than just Saturdays. But, um, but a lot of times it depends on the season too. Like in the summertime, um, I would love to just sit in the garden, maybe go swimming, um, reading and things like that. I love that. And, uh, but a lot of times it's just, it's artwork, you know, I'll sit, I'll draw, I'll think about next week. Um, a lot of times I'm also preparing for Sunday. I'm, uh, I, I teach the ladies session, ladies morning session at church. And, um, so I get my thoughts together about that, but I, I watch TV. What's really great about my job a lot of times is the fact that I can, I can work while I watch TV. So I'll just put something on in the background while I'm sketching things out or while I'm painting. Joker says, was it wrenching for salty nerd gross wrenching? What does that mean? Oh, wrenching. I gotcha. Wrenching for salty nerd grocery shopping, laundry, and basically as little as possible. See, I like doing laundry on either Sunday afternoons or Monday, like, like at the beginning of everything. Uh, drunk through video says joker i need help with my laundry <laughs> um let me double check something here really quickly mm -mm -mm. i'm already liking this background a lot better it looks a little dark at, at the screen here but I, i'm not so thrilled about this little scene here but i'm not too worried because i know the dragon is going to cover up a majority of this anyway and then of course we we'll throwing on some clouds here some happy happy little clouds of course uh Achilles Jones says Saturday morning usually buying groceries for the next week right so we tend to make our Saturdays all about preparing for the coming week um yeah pretty much pretty much okay I don't think that's too bad. I like that a lot better than and uh, my pastel pink background. And I think this is also going to make the dragon look more dynamic as well. So I'm going to put my brush in my cup of water. Cool, cool, cool. Let me bring this on over here so I can keep up with what people are saying. All right, of course, I want to let this dry. Now, we were going to go big or go home today with some of my guests, like Joker Voice and such. Um, we use stencils, right? And like email them some stencils. But no, 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 no. We we're going to freehand everything in this picture. And I also did that when I had Junk, Drunk 3PO on my channel. We were, well, no, we used a stencil too, didn't we? We did, I tried to make it easier. We did um, an avatar painting. And so we painted the entire background freehanded, but we did have a stencil for the Navi character. So today I was gonna step things up with Megan and we were going to try to paint this dragon let me bring this back on here for anybody who's new. Try to paint this dragon without a stencil. And I like to show everybody that, of course, there are things that make, you know, your image better and, and or more refined and whatnot. But it's not actually that difficult to draw or paint dragons, at least paint dragons, in my opinion, because you get more done in a single stroke. But it's really not that hard. I know it looks complicated because you've got a lot of elements going on and sometimes it's the color patterns and the, and the blending that throws us off, but it's not, it's not actually that hard. Sorry. Got caught up in my throat. Um, it's just a day guys. It's just a day between the tech. No, I can't get my words out. <laughs> Maybe cause I haven't had breakfast yet. Um, it's not actually that difficult to do dragons because as I always tell everybody, number one, dragons are a mythological creature, 
right? I've talked about this before. I'm just going to say it again. Um, you, you really can't mess up a dragon because there are so many variety of dragon with them being a fake creature, you know, to each their own, however you might believe about that. Um, you can't really mess them up. They can be short. They can be fat, one-legged, no legs. Like the sky's the limit when it comes to dragon. Um, so it's okay, you know, if it doesn't turn out exactly how you thought. But when you start with just a basic shape, much like stick figures, you can just grow from there. And I'm going to show you how to do that here in just a little bit after we get our clouds done. Um, let me see here. Heron of Alexandria. Hello and good morning. Uh, 6.30 on a Saturday morning, but worth it. Well, thank you. I am truly uh, honored and very pleased that you're here. I really am. Um, I know for those that just hopped on, my guest is having her own technical issues. Um, they've been having power outages. So I'm hoping Megan will be able to join in and at least say hi. But I told her stuff happens. I get it. As long as they're okay, as long as she's safe, happy, healthy, it's all right. Maybe you'll try to get her on here again. Um, dragons are fake. Shh, don't tell people. <laughs> um, so anyway, let me do a check here. Nice and dry. Has let's see here. All right. I'm going in for my stencil brush. I love using this brush for making clouds. That's what we're going to do here next. Just make some really beautiful, brilliant clouds. Las Vegas here myself. Oh, Vegas. I do love me some Vegas. I love the desert. Um, it's just such a beautiful place. If you stay away from the bad neighborhoods. <laughs> um, anyway, so I'm going to go into my white paint, getting just a little bit on here. And I'm just going to dab. Nice fluffy clouds. Clouds are some of my favorite things to make. Because much like our dragons, there's no wrong way to do them. They don't have an exact shape. We know what clouds are supposed to look like, okay, as far as the, the texture. Fluffy. They're meant to look fluffy, but they don't have an exact shape. So you can make them look like anything you want. When I teach the kids how to do clouds, it's so much fun because it's just, it's very freeing. It's very liberating. You can't mess it up. Again, there's always good and better ways to do things, but you can't mess it up. Now, some of my orange is lifting into my clouds, and I'm not mad about that at all because it just looks like the sky, the colors of the sky reflecting onto the clouds. That's perfect. Now guys, let me tell you of an experience that I had looking at the clouds. Okay, so as I said, <clears throat> there's no wrong way to make a cloud. Clouds have no exact shape, right? But we are aware of the fact that clouds, like, they're not necessarily geometric, right? They don't really have lines necessarily, maybe unless they're the cumulus nimbus clouds, but um, like where the bottom's really flat. But even then, but I'm telling you guys, okay, so I was on my way home from somewhere. I don't remember where. Um, I was actually, I was driving with my mom. I think we went to the store for something. I don't know. I was with my mom one time and she's driving, gazing off at the clouds, the beauty, the splendor of God's creation off in the distance. And I'm like, am I seeing what I am seeing right now in the sky? I'm like, no. And sure enough, after a little snippet of forest passes away and I can see off into the distance onto the horizon, I'm like, holy crap, there is a corner in the clouds. A corner, like this. <laughs> um, 
that's not normal. Like I, <laughs> so I, I'm trying to tell my mom, I'm like, there, oh my gosh. I'm like, look at that cloud over there. It's in the shape of a corner. There's a corner cut out of that cloud. And of course, as I say this, a bramble of trees, you know, blocks our view. We're waiting for it to disappear so we can we can look at it. She wants to see it. And you know how clouds, they never stay in the same place twice. My corner disappeared. Like as soon as the trees cleared, gone was the corner that I, the myth, the fabled, the fabled corner that I had spoken of. I'm like, I swear, it looked like somebody had taken like a knife and cut out a corner in the cloud. Like that's so weird. It never happens. Um, <laughs> and that is the beauty of clouds. They just, they're never the same. They're never the same. So that's why I tell the kids too, when I teach the classes on how to make clouds, I'm like, I always try to do the same kinds of clouds, but you can't, you can't ever do the exact same kind of clouds because they're always in motion, much like the future. Always in motion, the future is. So that just makes your painting kind of come to life, makes it look, makes it feel like you're not just painting an image onto the canvas, but you're painting a window into the world. And that's a nice thought. Commander Phil, hello and good morning. Uh, Joker voice, much like Bigfoot, cloud quarter. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Miss Martin Muses, good morning. Hope you're doing well. And again, I'll just go ahead and say for all of my new guests, yes, or my visitors, whatever, my guest uh, is having some technical issue, issues. So this is why you see me solitary, alone, by myself. But that's okay. We're still going to paint. We're painting a dragon. Megan, I see you. No, come on down. Come on in. Welcome to my world. <laughs> Come back. Come jump on. Wishes. Hi. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm sorry. It's been, like I told them, it's been quite the Saturday morning. Yeah, it has. <laughs> I, I could barely speak. Oh, girl, you have to go back and watch the beginning of this episode. Like, I start talking. I didn't have this thing plugged in. And, like, this shrieking sound just spread across. And I'm like, oh, my Aww. God. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to join, though. Me, too. I was like, no, I want to be here. Yes, Aww. yes. I know. I know. I'm doing this for you. Like, ugh. <laughs> I'm just a horrible person. <laughs> I control my power. Yeah. <laughs> People are saying hi. They're saying noob. It's so much hi. Nice you said she knew you would Ooh, make it. You uh, did. Well, all right. I'm sorry. I'm so behind now. It's okay. All right. I'm just working on some happy little clouds here. Oh, lovely. <laughs> so, well, so let me bring this up. So, well, hang on. I don't want to rush you because it's not like. It's not like my classes where I get paid to <laughs> make kids go faster. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> so, like, get it done. Okay, so we're just going over our supplies here, Megan. You got all your stuff. Like, I don't know where to begin, like, almost. You got water and a rag. And <laughs> okay, you've got all your paints out. Great. Yeah. Um, let me bring up my thing here so you can see. Remember we talked about... Uh, mm -hmm. We talked about the fact... The, this just kind of looks like grandma's bathroom, these color choices I yes, have for yes. our background. Yeah, and I was just like, no, we're going <laughs> to change that. So I don't know what you wanted to change. I decided to go with like a sunset vibe, right? Ooh, yeah. So I just started, you know, with my red and my yellow because we know that makes orange. Mm -hmm. um, and I started that off in my corner and just gradually started adding more yellow and a little okay. bit of white so it gets really nice and soft. So, okay. I mean, you're you're a painter. You're an artist, yeah. right? So, I mean, we'll you try that. You feel it, you know. Um, so I'll just kind of put myself on pause and let you, you know, catch up to me. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I was telling everybody in the beginning, it's so great. It actually, it, it worked out. All things work together for good. Um, that I was like explaining, okay, guys, we're having technical issues. Things are happening. And um, I don't know if my guest will be here, but um, I do have a little video of basically what she does in a nutshell if she's not able to be here. And so I'll go ahead and play that uh, again for this. I am... <laughs> A uh, complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. <laughs> Your face. I know nothing. <laughs> um, that was from Girls' Night. And I was like, I just want to clip that. The way you said, I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's <try> low. <laughs> I mean, I, I kind of, I was telling everybody, I kind of feel the same way a little bit as well. Is the, I, I like, I need, to, I need to do what you're doing. Like, I have a handful of comic books, but I... I don't actually know a lot of the, I guess you would say the lore of our comic book characters. Like I'm just yeah, taking, no. you know, the Marvel movies for face value. And then I talk to like somebody like my brother yeah, and he's like, well, the reason that they do this and the personality that they have and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, see, I don't feel like I, I don't personally feel like I need to know that information when I watch the movie. And I feel, I, I believe that's kind of part of the struggle, I think, with, with the movies, the games, the comics, every, the shows, is the fact that you have people like me with a general knowledge of the characters. Like, I know they exist. Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, I know what their superpowers are, but I don't know the relationships they've had, all the babies that they're supporting on, you know, child support and all this kind of stuff, right? And so I'm just watching these movies. And so I think when they make the films, it's really hard to try to make a movie that tells you everything you need to know about the character and not need backstory. Yeah. Um, I think that that's really, really difficult. And I think that seems to be, for me, like a, an issue that, seems to be popping up when it comes to the latest MCU universe stuff. Like a lot of people are like, all right, just call it like it is the She-Hulk stuff. Like I've seen such a great division on She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. And like, I know nothing about She-Hulk except that she's the female Hulk. <laughs> I had yeah. no idea she was related to him. I had no idea that she broke the fourth wall. I didn't know anything like and just like i just i just want to so it's um it's crazy you know it's like everybody's a lot of people you know again they're on one side or the other <clears throat> saying well she hulks like this and the other's like well no but this is weird so it's like where do you find that that balance in your reviews in your comic readings have you done any she hulk research um not I haven't actually. I have a couple comic books, She Hulk, that I want to get into because I'm not as familiar with her, to be completely honest. Mm -hmm. But like now that like the show is out and everything, I'm like, hey, this is kind of where everybody's mind is at. So it'd probably be a good thing to like read this and review it because mm -hmm. everybody's kind of in that headspace anyway. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, so. But yeah, no, like. I don't know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the little snippet says, I know nothing. <laughs> I know nothing. <laughs> um, Drunk 3PO wants to know what kind of heels you're wearing. <laughs> I was going to talk heels. about that. They're I, bare heels. Bare feet heels. Bare, bare, bare feet heels. Nice. Wow. The, the heels God gave me. <laughs> the heels I was born with. I can't, I can't walk around in heels. I just don't do that. You, what? If Dolly Parton can do it. <laughs> um yeah i don't know how much to talk to you about like while you're painting how's it going or is it this how i got so far oh oh that's really pretty so i'm almost got it covered yeah see we're catching up we're doing great yeah <clears throat> Um, Commander Phil says, fair. I grew up on everything Star Wars, Marvel, and DC. I respect the lore. Uh, let's see. I, I know respecting the lore is really important to the characters in general, and all of those franchises aren't really doing that as of late. Yeah. You know, as I was tell, I tell people all the time, I, um, I mean, I enjoy the Marvel universe very much, though. I like the characters and everything. But I personally, I tell people all the time, I'm like, I... 
think they should have stopped after Endgame. I know there's a whole bunch of more content that they could have made. You know, there's so many more stories to tell, but I was just like, they're going to drain this dry. Like it's mm. going, it's going to happen where there's going to come a schism and everybody's upset and they're going to try to go this way and go that way. And I'm like, it's going to happen. I said that about Star Wars. I said that about Marvel. I'm like, it's going to happen. I'm afraid they're going to just basically, you know, as Bilbo said in uh, the Fellowship of the Ring, it's going to become butter spread over too much bread. Mm, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, and right. That seems to be happening. And it's so sad. So sad. Yeah. <laughs> Um, D Dolly will always be a legend. I mean, she still is. She, she yeah. still is and always will be. That's true. Megan made some cool shoes for the meetup in Dallas, so that's why I asked. I know. I saw, like, was it was it Friday Night Tight shoes you made? Mm -hmm. Those looked pretty amazing. I was going to bring that up and ask you, like, did you, how did you bedazzle those things? Did you just glue them on there? I or? got, um, on, on Amazon, you can buy bedazzle, like, jewels, and they're on, like, it's like tape. Okay. It's like, like just tape. Like just think like like tape like this, but like bedazzled jewels are on it, and you can just cut it okay, into yeah. the shape you want. Yeah. And that's how I did that. <laughs> <laughs> how oh. long did that take? That took me. Um, I worked on it like for like maybe thirty minutes to an hour a day for about a week. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it, I hope they were comfortable. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> of course they weren't. Of course they weren't. People, look, if girls know, for things like this, it's not about comfort. It's all about no. fashion. It's all about. Although I decided for the Orlando meetup, um, I decided I'm going to make some more. Oh. But they're going to be like sneakers. <laughs> I'm bedazzling some sneakers. <laughs> sneakers. So you're going to go to the one. Um, oh, beautiful. There we go. Yeah. That's it's going to be so great with the clouds and the dry. I, I think uh, we have made a good decision to not paint pastel yeah. pink sky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is going to be very more, much more powerful looking. I think so. I'm not sure what was in my head. I think I was trying to go for you know like a pink sunset, and I used right, just right. too much white, and it had just a little bit of purple on it, so it just turned into this weird mauve color. And I'm like, the sky's not mauve. Um, <laughs> So yeah, um. So you're okay. going to New Orleans? Is that that's what in October? Is it? Yes. Cool. Yes, late October. Mm. I, I can't wait to see the shoes. Can't wait. That's gonna be fantabulous. Um. Okay. Yes, no. they say she has those FNT shoes, which is awesome. I saw the FNT shoes. They look so cool. I remember you weren't sure about wearing them and all of us are, were encouraging you to. Yes. Do, probably. Yes, that's right. I almost didn't. I I believe you because. It was like the flashiest thing I'd ever worn in my life. And I was like, maybe this is a little over the top, you know? Yeah. It's, it's one of those things like when you're a really big fan of something, you really want to exude and show off. Right. But at the same yeah. time, I at least for my part, I'm like, do I look like one of those people? Yes, that's what I was worried about. And then you think to yourself, but I, I am. Inside, I am one of those people. <laughs> Do I want to yeah, let everybody know people. that I am one of those people? <laughs> okay. For the clouds, did you use mm -hmm. the same brush? Okay, let me. I did not. So didn't you do your homework? I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I know, again, I know it's going to be one of those mornings. So, of course, I want my background to dry, but I am using my... Uh, Stencil brush. Were you able to acquire one of these? All right. If you were not, you can always use another half in or another flat brush. It's just mm -hmm. that the clouds will look a little different. That's all. I and feel like... um, oh, this one will work better. Okay. We good. <clears throat> so I don't know yeah, if, I'm, the, if the I'm dry enough though. Oh, probably not yet. Um, the technique here, though, is that I always tell the kids, let me get this just to, now that we're pretty much caught up. Pretty much. And uh, be sure, though, folks, now that Megan is here to hit that like button. If you didn't like the show before, you should definitely like it now because she's here. Um, <laughs> so, uh, with this brush, when I make these kinds of clouds, of course, you're more than welcome to make any kind of clouds you want to because this is your painting. But the way I make my clouds is that the two, I follow two rules. 
One is that I use very little paint, very mm -hmm. little paint, and that I use up what I have in my brush before I go and get more. Okay. So let me show, let me get just, just a wee bit on the brush here. And uh, I'll just dab away at an angle and just use it up until it gets very sparse. And I, I mix it up. You can see there's thicker and thinner areas. I'm going to start mm -hmm. making, I'm making like these alto cumulus clouds or whatever like that by the popcorn clouds. So I'm going to try to connect some of them. But yeah, and I'm just kind of doing this section of the sky because I want the dragon, you know, it's going to be popping up out yeah. here later on. Um, good morning to all the new folk, Decepticons, Cave of Villains, and uh, Ryan Roger Athe. Hello, hello. Ryan. Oh, Ryan Roger Athe, a rising star. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. And uh, I was saying earlier that some of my my orange, even though my painting was dry, I guess uh, the, uh, the dampness of my white just kind of reignited the pigment. And so I got a little bit of it into my clouds, which I'm not mad about because it just makes it look like. It's kind of, it's like a nice reflection on the clouds of like the light or whatever. Right, exactly. So I'm, I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of refine some of my clouds here. And uh, well, so while we're waiting for, for your background to dry and all this kind of stuff, go ahead, Megan. Talk to us. Tell us about noob reviews. Besides the fact that you know nothing, because you go a little deeper into how you <laughs> don't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> Have you always known the reason nothing? why I don't know anything? Right. Yeah. <laughs> the story of Megan? No. <laughs> the story of Megan. Start at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know nothing because um, uh, we didn't have a TV growing up mm. and we didn't, I was homeschooled, so I wasn't, um, you know, if you go to public school, you're at least like exposed to like whatever the other kids are into, right? Mm, I do. Homeschool alumni here. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and I didn't mind being homeschooled. I loved it. Right. Um, but yeah. Because I did go to public school for the last two years of high school, and I thought that was the stupidest waste of my time in the world, to uh, be honest. Interesting. Yeah. Because I was ahead of everybody, and, like, you're in the classroom, the teacher teaches you something, and you do the project, and you get it done, and then you just have to sit there and wait for everybody. Right, right. Because in home school, there's like, a lot of self-discipline. Yeah. Like, nobody's really making you get it done. Either you're doing it, or you're, you're, you're not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway, so, like, um, do you get a lot of exposure to pop culture? And um, my mom was raised in a very strict Baptist home when she was a kid, so they didn't do, mm. like, they had a TV growing up, but they, she was the youngest of eight, so it's not like they had a lot of money to mm -hmm. spend on things like, you know, fancy expensive toys or yeah. whatever, right? Yeah. So, anyway, she was never really exposed to that type of stuff either, and then, um, my dad had never had much of an interest in nerdy things or whatever. So mm -hmm. I came across it really late in life and was like, I love this stuff. <laughs> right. Yes. I don't know anything about it, but mm -hmm. I really, really like it and I want to know more. So when did you discover that you liked it and wanted to know it? I mean, like how old were you? Were you, was it after high school or? Oh yeah. I was probably like in, in, um, well, after high school, probably like in my early 20s, very like 19, 20, 21. But then I thought, oh, I'm too old now. Uh, like, yeah. like, that's kid stuff. Like, you're, right. you know, I can't, that's not, it's all kid stuff where, you know, like you're a weirdo if you're into this or so, whatever. Mm -hmm. I had this like really weird idea, right? So I didn't really pursue it. <clears throat> and then, um, I don't know, about three years ago, I went, you know what? If I like something, I'm going to do it. So there. <laughs> there you go. Right. We are in the perfect era for that. I mean, like with YouTube and everything like that, um, like you can do whatever you want to, you know, you can talk about whatever you want. And mm -hmm. I think it's, I think there's, there's such a uniqueness to your channel. I mean, there might be other people out there, but it's just like, I don't know. You're the first, first person I've seen. Uh, with a channel like yours 
And um, I think it's pretty cool. I watched one of your videos and I was just like, oh, that's, I, I'm like, I think I've read that comic or like you were doing Donald Duck, I think mm -hmm. it was. And it was one with the unicorn and stuff. Mm -hmm. It was just so funny. You're like, why would they believe their uncle? Like he just ripped them off over yeah. here and now he's like lying to them over here. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think that that's pretty, what, what made you decide to do a YouTube channel about learning? It was, it was right stuff. at the beginning of the coof and I was bored and I was finding my entertainment on YouTube a lot more. Mm, as we all were. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I was watching all these people do this kind of thinking. I could do this. I, could do this. I think I could do this. I could talk about things I don't know. <laughs> Well, the first thing was, what would I talk about? It didn't occur yeah. to me right away. And then I went, well, I can talk about what I don't know. And it can be like this learning journey and you can all See, come with me. That's brilliant because most of the time we do, I like, I, when I started mine, it was like, yeah, what do I do? What do I, yeah. I, I need to know what I'm doing before I start it. Mm -hmm. And I need to have, I'm just, I think I'm just that general person, but it's like, um, what, I need to have all the information before I start, right? Yeah. And so the yeah. fact that you're doing a channel where you don't know about the topics that you're advertising for, basically, like, okay, I'm today I'm reading She Hulk. It's like, I don't know anything about She Hulk. Let's learn together. Like, I think it's just such a unique idea to, to basically, like, yeah, let other people watch you learn about mm -hmm. the stuff that most, a lot of people already know. And um, I think that, and again, like, I don't know that much either. So I think that's really. Brilliant. I was super nervous because I, I assumed I was just going to be surrounded by people who knew, which I am, mm -hmm. know a lot, know everything. And I was just super nervous. I think about like, it's dumb. You shouldn't care so much what other people think of you, but like you do. You do. You do. <laughs> um, so I was all like, oh no, people are going to, you know you're gonna make fun of me they're gonna say stuff and but mm -hmm. actually everybody has been so very i think people are more excited to see somebody in their world that doesn't know and wants to know so they're actually people have been very very kind i haven't had anybody like pick on me for not knowing anything right yeah it's it, it's pretty cool um I'll see you later, Commander Phil. I said, you, you see, you're taking your mom for her birthday. That's great. Oh, fun. Um, Joker says, what? Now I love your enthusiasm so much more. So refreshing as opposed to me, the cynical homicidal clown. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Achilles Jones says, thanks to drunk 3PO, I should visit Tabitha more often. So relaxing, but so at the same time full of talent. Oh, thank you. Mm-hmm. I try. I try. Some I, I tell this all the time and maybe I should stop, but you know, be you on all that wonderfulness. It's like when I do these streams, I get really nervous and a little bit Aww. irritated as I go along the way sometimes because like you, most of my guests aren't artists, right? So I have to I have to simplify the paintings. Yeah. So um they're able to do it. And I think being able to being a, a teacher, like a children's art teacher has really helped me even when it comes. And I've, I've taught adults before, but it helps with adults too, because it's still simple. It's still brand new maybe to them. And so I feel like I'm not presenting like my best work, right? Like I feel like mm. I'm on dis display, but it actually, I was telling this to some of my patron members, um, I was writing a little thing on my Patreon page where um, I re have to realize it's not about me, right? This is a show that is supposed to help other people feel better about themselves. And I'm teaching them what they could do. This is not really me reflecting my, uh, and presenting the skills and the talents that I have. It's more mm -hmm. about teaching other people and helping them learn and see if they have the same thing or, or, or develop it in their own way. And that's kind of humbling. So I just have to remind myself of that <laughs> a lot. Yeah. Um, go. we're gonna make megan a comic book expert within the year says daniel <laughs> uh heron of alexandria says i still want to see your husband's book collection oh, that's right so you're married so does yes your, does your husband enjoy the nerd stuff yeah actually it's really funny because 
I I started to get into it and I told him this is what I'm going to do. And he's like, okay, <laughs> you nerd. <laughs> and now, guess who has bought way more comic books than me? Oh. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Do you think he'd ever be on your YouTube channel, like guiding you through something? Um, probably not. He doesn't probably. like, he's a very like quiet, like private person. Ah, okay. But, um, Again. he, um, he gets into it like, first of all, he can retain information way better than I can. <laughs> uh, one of those people. <laughs> all the facts, all the technical, you know. The jargon, yeah. The, yes. So he's all into that, and he's into, like, um, collecting, and he'll look up on the different sites. This is worth such and such, but it's um, if you look, they're going to make a movie in the next couple years, so it's going to go up in price, and blah, and I'm like, okay, and, like, you can rate. <laughs> and you're like, I think the colors like, are pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I like the art. <laughs> <laughs> I like this story. Um, Her shoes are cute. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, we just come at it from very different angles, and it's mm -hmm. really funny. <laughs> um, I'm done with my clouds. I'm afraid I'm going to make my whole sky cloud. So I want to be able to see the orange still back here. So I'm going to put this in my cup of water and then let it dry. Oops. My clouds look like they're not as... um. And they're not as happy as I wish them to be. I think I need to fill oh, them out more. They're good. I don't know. I think they're pretty nice. They do. They look like the popcorn. I think that's what they're called. Alto cumulus clouds. The popcorn shrimp clouds. Okay. <laughs> little gonna, tiny I'm gonna fluffy fluff it. I'm going to bring them up a little bit more into the yellow. Yeah. And then I think I think I I don't want to do it too much. You know, you like you keep going. You do yeah. too much. That's what I was doing. I'm like, you know, I really should stop. Basically, I'm just doing this because and and this is not to sound impatient like i'm just mm -hmm. doing this because i'm waiting for you to catch up and i'm like realizing mm -hmm. i'm filling this up too much I need to stop. like just to keep my hands busy basically well yeah <laughs> like, no. uh don't do that um so um so do you have like a series that you do? Like, do you have themes that you do? I haven't watched all of your videos. There's so many people to keep up with, but oh, I know there is. It's crazy, yes. right? I and never get a chance. To, I always watch little bits of people's. I do try and go like like their video, make sure I watch mm -hmm. a little bit, go back if I can. But yeah, it's hard um, to watch everybody's. So. It, it's really hard to keep up. And then the more people that <clears throat> you keep meeting and and all this kind mm -hmm. of stuff, it's really hard. Do you do um, like themes? Do you do like I don't know how often you stream necessarily. Like, do you do once I do, a week? Or? I do every Sunday. I record a video every Sunday of what I've read that week previous, and I usually do about four comics that I'll go over. Sometimes I've read more than four, but I'll choose the four I like the best that I want to review and I want to share with everybody. And you know, I'll just go through what I liked about it, what I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Um. And then I've been trying on Wednesdays when I do get an independent comic, I will review independent comics on Wednesdays. Ah. Um, yeah. And then I just, I haven't got like an actual um, like schedule for live streaming or anything, but I will randomly do a live stream, like usually on a Tuesday. Okay. That's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, I saw you were interviewing um, oh, somebody. Yes, uh, Justin Murphy is an Thank independent you. comic book writer and artist, mm -hmm. and he, um, Daniel in the chat here, he actually recommended that I wa I read War Party, and that was Justin Murphy's comic book, and I loved it, and um, I thought I should like, I should have people, I should have guests on, you know? <laughs> Great. So, um, Wish you their ways. <laughs> I was super nervous about asking him, and I was like to, to my husband, I said, "Should I, should I ask? What would, what if?" And he's like, "Well, yeah. If he says no, he says no. But if you don't ask, you never know." See, that's where I'm at. Yeah, exactly. I have people. I'm like, I should invite them onto my channel. What if they say no? And then I'm like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to ask him. I went onto my Twitter. I went to go ask him, and he'd already messaged me and was like, "Hey." You know, do you want to be on my channel or can I be on your channel? Because I see you've been reviewing. I had by then reviewed three. 
of his comic books. And so he thought that was really cool. And I was like, wow, okay. <laughs> That's so cool of how that worked out. That's awesome. Yeah, it was funny. That's pretty cool. Um, so it was meant to be, I guess. Do you do like... Like, I don't know. Do you do like a, a theme? Like I said, like all Marvel comics one week and then Dark Horse or something like that another week? Or do you just mix I it just up? Mix it up. I just mix it up. I try and do at least one DC and one Marvel, sometimes two of each. So I get a nice even. Yeah. Well rounded, right? Right. Where do you yeah. find your comic? Oh, here we go. I think, I think <gasps> I'm going to leave it at this. That looks really nice. You know what's the great thing about skies like this and, and, and clouds is that you can't really do them wrong. And they're just beautiful on their own. Like, yeah. You really don't even need anything on there. It's just like that. You can put that on the wall and it's just peaceful. It's happy. Like, that's it. That's all you need. <laughs> but we're, of course, going to uh, continue and put a dragon on here in just a little bit when we make sure that's all nice and dry. Um, I'm going to ask you one more question before I give you my dragon my stencil free dragon tutorial okay. and uh that's what i told everybody earlier i'm like i'm up in this because with my other some of my other guests we all had stencils right mm -hmm. not megan no Ooh. we're we're free handing a dragon have you ever, have you ever painted a dragon before i've never painted a dragon excellent i've done baby animals <laughs> Well, we'll just think of this as a baby animal. <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you get your comic books? Like, do you keep them? Do you borrow them? Like, the, after a while, does that not, like, stockpile? Oh, we got a stockpile of comic books. Because my husband likes to keep things. I do, too. But I like to keep the things I really, really love. Yeah. Right? And then if I'm not going to read it again or I didn't like it as much, I I want to, like, give it away. Or something. Vanilla Sky? Yeah. <laughs> Mine's like a sherbet. Like a, you know, sherbet. Mm -hmm. sherbet sky. <laughs> no, we get them at, we have a comic book store, and he's got a lot of, um, like, the new comics, and then the comics from, like, back to, like, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s. You know, he's got them all. Okay. And then we go on eBay a lot, too. Yeah. That's yeah. nice. So, yeah. Sure. All over the place. Um. Well, I'll continue asking questions here in just a second to make sure we've got everything figured out. I I'm still working on like how to arrange everything. It's <sighs> my main agenda with Megan's channel is that I would <laughs> make it mainly about indie European French comic books. But Daniel loves European. I have some and I really love the art. The art is so very different from like Marvel DC, right? I so. can see that. I mean, different. I So I don't know if this counts. I used to. Oh, man. I am so upset that I decided to get rid of them. I went through this phase where I was totally into comic books. Like, I wanted to be one of those kids. Mm -hmm. Right? And actually, I was like a preteen or early teenager. And then I went through a growing up phase where I'm like, this is childish. I don't need these anymore. Right? I'm trying to be one of those. Yeah. One of those. Those kids. Yeah. And I got rid of like, I'm talking like a stack. Now, they were all in German. Okay, so I don't think that wow. counts technically as a European comic book because of the fact that they were American characters just in German. <laughs> but I mean, I had Batman, I had Superman, I had Wonder Woman, I did have uh, wow. DuckTales, and I had Spawn, and I had so many, and they were beautiful. They were so beautiful, and I got rid of them. And oh I goodness. actually brought them from Germany here. <laughs> And I went through that phase where I was just like, no, that's that's just for children. Like, it's for immature adults, blah, blah, blah. And then as I got older and kind of went back into that stuff, I'm like, I I know enough German that I could have figured out what they were saying. What? I mean, I had them. They were in the plastic casing, and they looked really oh, special. The Wonder wow. Woman ones. I think one of them was special edition. It was, like, holographic <gasps> and everything like that. It oh was so cool. And I'm like, what a dinkus. But anyway, oh, yeah. let's not dwell on the past. So <laughs> I am going to put this back here. As I said earlier, it can be a little overwhelming when we look at the finished product because we're seeing everything in its entirety. And it's like, where do I start? What do I do? Um, 
So that's why we always break things down to its most simplest form. And so if you think about the dragon, don't worry about the legs, the wings, the, the rider. Um, we're looking at the basic structure of the entire body, which would be from here, the, the spine and, and the head and like the tail, you know, all this right here. So I've got a little sketch, essentially. <laughs> this is the basics of our dragon. If we think of it in three parts here, the head with attached with the neck, but the head, the spine, like the back, and then the tail. And this is this is essentially a little, nice little squiggle out in the ether here. And you just kind of imagine, and, and this is all going to be done with just one little line so we can kind of like figure things out as we go along. We can always clean things up later, mm -hmm. right? And especially if you've never painted a dragon before, as long as at the end it still looks like a dragon, it's great. You know, it's, it's hard and very difficult, nigh into impossible to be perfect at something the first time. And to those people who are those gifted people, I just want to say that I'm glad Jesus loves you because I find it very difficult for myself to get along with these people. They irritate me so badly. <laughs> <laughs> um, bye, Ryan Roger. Hey, got to go make a video now, folks. Enjoy the show. Thank you for stopping by. But uh, I'm going to flip the little page here and keep that. See, well, we can't see. And so, again, you know, I've got this little thing here. You just imagine where your sky is and everything. And we're just going to imagine we've got our head that goes down into um, shoulder blade, right? We're just doing a little hmm. squiggle. We're familiar with the basic anatomy of most animals. So we know there's a head, there's a neck. And then we're just going to curve down and out. Whoops. That's like the shoulder of the hump there that goes into the belly, out to the hip. So we've got our socket here. This would essentially be our hip bone. I think, yeah, we're just going to make that a little cleaner. But And then we're going to round this out to a tail. And you could do whatever the flippity floop you want to do with the tail. Um, <laughs> so, uh, we'll most likely make it really nice and pretty, you know, like so. But I'm just saying the tail is your least of, of your problems. It's really just yeah. right, right here. And so from here then we can figure out like, okay, we've got legs, right? We get that basic idea. Hmm. We're going to do the wings, right? So once you have a place to start, it's pretty easy to figure. I say easy, but it's a little more simple to figure out where everything goes. And again, I'm going to be here step by step to help you out with all of that. We're not going to trace. We are going to just go for it. And the great thing about acrylic paint, as we know, is if we make a little mistake, we can always try to wait for it to dry and cover it up. That's true. So I here's hoping that my, I always like, when I freehand stuff, like I'm pretty gifted at painting dragons and then I get nervous on these streams when I do stuff. But I'm uh, super nervous right now. <laughs> it's gonna look fantastic. It's going, it's going to be great. Fantastic. Fabulous. <laughs> so, um, is your background dry is the question of the day right now. There's some, where's some white wet spots. Yeah, of course. Of where course. it was a little thicker. Mm -hmm. No okay. problem. That's all good. Um, you get that to dry. Sometimes I tell people, like, if you have a blow dryer, now would be the time to use it. Or if you have like a piece of paper or. I a, can dab it. Or you can dab. Exactly. There, get your. <laughs> get your. <laughs> it kind of fluffs the clouds, actually. Yes, this is one of the many ways to do that. You could also do that like, with a sponge or whatever like that. Uh, Max Miles, hello. Welcome. Thank you for being here today. Well, while she's dabbing out, I've got a little video here that um, just if you want to support the channel and help out, maybe you can get a little sneak preview of what all that I do here while Megan dabs her little heart out. Now, at this point in the video, you're probably thinking to yourself, man, Tabitha is just so great. I love her artwork. I wish I could support her and help her in some way. Just let her know that I think what she's doing is great. And I just want to say that I am so glad that that's what you're thinking right now. And if you are looking for ways to support me and my channel, there are a couple of links in the description box below. You can check out my Patreon page where you can get exclusive behind the scenes footage and pictures of what I'm working on, my works in progress. 
You can also check out my Etsy shop where you can purchase some of my art pieces that I have made. Or if you just want to make a one-time donation, you can click on my PayPal link because maybe you just have a bunch of money sitting around and you just don't know what to do with it. And you think, man, she looks hungry. Let's let her grab a slice of pizza this weekend. I would appreciate it. But most importantly, if you could leave me a like, that would be fantastic. And if you're new here and you like what you see, just simply subscribe and ring the notification bell so you get updated on all of my upcoming videos. Now, on with the show. Dab, dab, dab. Perfect. Make it look fab. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think, I think we're good. Excellent. Look at that. Perfect timing for the commercial. <laughs> yeah. Just, let me go. Take some of the breaks off there. It was actually perfect on so many reasons. I totally forgot to plug in my iPad for my second camera. And I just happened to look up while the commercial's going. And it says, like, it's low on battery. And I'm like, this is the camera that I need. Now I'm a little bit concerned. It says it's charging. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> it's on, like, 5%. Oh, boy. So if we struggle, again, with technical issues, I do have another thing I can use. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Let's just go ahead and get started. Okay. Okay. God blesses everyone. Okay. So surprisingly <laughs> enough, we are not going to be using the detail brush. And in the meantime, I unplugged my light. See, okay. I love it. This stream is, is awful and wonderful at the same time. I'm like, why am I so dark? Because I unplugged my light so I could plug in the charge. Aww. That's okay. It's not about me. You don't need to see me. It's okay. I can kind we'll of see you. We'll it's just, good. Just turn. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we're going to be. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're going to be using our half-inch flat brush here, and instead of our detail brush for it, we're going to go big or go home. I like to accomplish as much as I can in one little stroke. But we're going to. You're familiar with the half-inch I, I suspect. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so. You know, we know we can use this for um, <clears throat> fine details as well. And so I'm going to not use the broad end of it, but I'm going to use the nice narrow spot. So it depends on, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got, I need, excuse me. There we go. <laughs> Depending on what kind of blue you want your dragon to be, I'm just going to use straight up blue and eventually start incorporating a little bit of white in there okay. um because when it comes to painting dragons i like to have you know two versions of one color just because you know the underside typically is is you know when you look at a crocodile iguana the bellies are always brighter so i'm just going to go straight into my blue if you wanted to have like a greenish kind of blue a purplish blue by all means mix your colors i'm just going to go straight into my blue get a little bit on here not too much because i don't want to i don't want to lose control hmm. We're taking a deep breath and just try to imagine again we bring this in here try to imagine where again don't worry about the wings we'll compensate for that later but try to imagine where you want your dragon to go um i'm starting starting you know a little bit over here right and we're gonna we're gonna go small because we can always get bigger here and i'm gonna add that little bit of a curve to help myself out i'm gonna bring that it's always good when the teacher actually knows what they're doing. I'm um, going to just do a little bit of a curve like this. We can do that. No problem. No problem. We got this. Try not to take it too seriously. And if it helps, you can do a little ball just to kind of give you an idea, not too big, but just a, a, enough to let you know, okay, that's where the joint is. And you can kind of figure out the rest of the body as well. It just gives us a little bit more confidence. And then we know that, you know, when the riders um, sit on there, there's gonna be a little dip at the end of the neck that goes into that, that spine area there. I say spine. When I say that, I really just mean the back. I just keep saying spine because I know the spine goes up the neck, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I feel we understand where I'm coming from. And I'm going to make a nice length of the body with a little bit of a curve here because we have the hip area. So I'm going to make a little ball here just to help me understand. 
where I'm going. Do we have a blue squiggle? Kind of. Excellent. I know he's squiggly enough. No, that's great. I like that it's broken up. Oh, that's going to look so fantastic. Your sky looks really good. And that blue is just going to be just amazing. Um, so, and I just want to quickly pause and say, thank you, Jesus, that my cord is working. Like literally, thank you, Jesus, because I was on 3%. Now I'm on 10. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> uh, okay. So then from back here, again, the tail we can have now we've got, we've got the hardest honestly one of the hardest parts out of the way megan is just getting okay. that structure so with the tail now we can just do kind of whatever we want but i i do like to make sure it goes down and then actually comes up a little bit at the end because they're flying so the tail the the lightest part of the tail would kind of be a little looser and, and the wind would catch it kind of blow upwards a little bit not too much i'm making this one go up a little higher than the previous one but you can still tell it's not necessarily pointing downwards because, again, the wind would catch that. A little touch of realism in there in the world around us. That's what makes um, paintings uh, look better is because it's something that makes sense to us. A lot of times we, especially if we're not artists, but even if we are, we can look at something and say, I like it, but there's something wrong with it. Like you think that internally, like mm -hmm. not as a negative way, but like from a comprehensive aspect. Like so I feel about my blue line right now, but <laughs> right. There's, there's something with wrong with it. We can't figure it out. A lot of times the details are in the realism. So like if I, you know, draw my hand like this, but my arm is maybe too far. Like maybe if I'm like this, ah, here we mm -hmm. go. Um, I mean, I look like I'm waving and I'm greeting, but this is not how people normally would hold their hand if yeah. they're standing and doing stuff, right? Even though I can do that, it would be something like this. Mm -hmm. So just that little slight position change throws people off. And so for other people out there who are also learning to draw and paint, that is something that you develop. It's, it's, it's learning observation while creating. Um, I don't have it down packed. But when you're when you're painting and creating, kind of think of the story, not just, well, this is my character. No, it's like, where are they going? Mm -hmm. You know, what time of day is it? Um, where is the sun? People don't realize that these are all the things that you're considering when you're creating, you know. Lulu, yeah. good morning. I hope that you're having a fantastic Saturday. So good to always good to see you here. Um, here we go. So I've got my basic little worm out here in the middle of the sky. <laughs> and so now what we're going to do, we have a place to put everything, right? So basically now we're just going to fill out a little bit. So I start back up at the neck and this is way too skinny. He needs, he needs some food. Um, as do I, I'm, I'm hungry. <laughs> Aww. It's okay. Um, I'm always, I'm always hungry. I'm a starving bird. So, um, <laughs> I am always hungry, though. I don't know what that is. Anyway, so I'm just going to start at the beginning and just fill in a little bit at a time to make this a little bit thicker. Now, what's really cool is that, again, dragons. Let me show a picture, if I might. Um, <laughs> one of the pictures I always show the kids. Try to build their confidence, and I think that we'll do the same thing here. Is that... Here we go. Let me get rid of this. Dragons look all, it takes all kinds. So if you can see here, here's a little dragon Aww. made out of berries. Now this is a dragon, a style, the shape of the dragon that we're typically familiar with. Long yeah. neck, big head, those nice little bat wings. But then you've got dragons like this. They're this fat, he has no neck, tiny wings. <laughs> he still looks like a dragon. And then last mm -hmm. but not least, the world's favorite dragon, most likely. Uh, toothless. Aww, <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I like I always say, there there are different ways to do this, and um, so don't be afraid. You know, it, and, and if it doesn't look like mine, that's great because of the fact that ugh, dragons are all different. Um, try to let your imagination go. So here we go. I'm just going to fill this in a little bit, and then as we go down towards the the chest area, 
little bit past the shoulder. We're going to start getting a little bit wider, always a little bit at a time, because like horses, dogs, even humans, our rib cage we know is, is, is wider. And so it, it's wider than our neck, of course. So we need it to look a little fuller. So I add some curve to it. And then like most um, creatures, even humans, tend to get more narrow at the waistline. So the berry dragon is so cute. Yes, it is. It's one of my favorite little. I've recently been on Pinterest and I've been seeing cows as fruit. And it's so adorable. I plan to make some shorts on that. I'm going to do some sketches and put them up as shorts. <laughs> They're so adorable. Little strawberry cows. So here we go. I've got like the lot. Oh, my apologies. I've got like the Loch Ness monster vibe going on right now, but that's okay. And I'm just cleaning this up or filling in. Toothless is fine. I'm leaning more towards Matt Smith's dragon in the House of Dragon. You know, no matter how epic the dragons might be in Game of Thrones series, they'll never be toothless. Never. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> good morning, Jacob Ironside. I hope that you are having a fan. Fantastic Saturday. Thank you for joining us. I'm here with the noob reviews um, to help you guys in a nutshell. I am a complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. And that's all you need to know about me. <laughs> 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 and uh, and that she makes shoes. Yes. She, bed she bedazzles shoes. A bedazzle. She's a bedazzler. That's actually the first time I ever bedazzled anything. And I was like, man. Okay, so that being said, what in the world? What, what made you think, I need to do this when I go out there? Okay, actually, I made it. Um, originally, those shoes were made for um, their music video. Okay, so when, uh, what's his face? Uh, Dan. Dan Vask did the theme song for Friday Night Tights. He composed mm -hmm. that song. And then he was doing a music video, um, and he invited all his fans to, like, send in, like, video clips. Right. And I was like, okay, okay. Well, what am I going to do? And um, so I, I've done a bit of modeling, and I was like, I'm just going to throw in some, some dance stuff, some model stuff, and I'm going to make these shoes that – I don't know. I just got in my head that I was going to have these. Yeah. Shoes. So that's yeah, awesome. that's that's why I. Okay. <laughs> made I saw shoes. his Instagram yesterday. The song that he did. Oh. Uh, shoot, what song was it? Um, and it was just like amazing. Yes. Because yes, blending. <laughs> because of the fact that he did like his old song and turned it into metal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now he does his that a stuff, lot. It's really great. His stuff I like and I can handle because mm -hmm. it's, there is, there's something for me personally, I'm not a huge metal person, but like his music, it's more than just angry noise. Yes. I might say yes, that. Yes, for sure. Um, So I could like, heaven is a place on earth. That's, That's what right. it was. And I was like, this is the most amazing cover of this song I've ever heard. Yeah. It was so much it. fun. Um. Um, real quickly, let me see here. I don't know what your dragon is looking like at the moment. I'm just kind of refining some of my edges. I've got it a little bit thicker here. Now I've got like a snake that has eaten in the sky. Um, um I'll show you what it got. Yes, dude. I feel like I need a little bit bigger curve. Right. Oh, but it's good. No, no, it's good. And um, you'll notice that like your curve on the neck is not as curvaceous as mine, which is totally no, fine because isn't. that just makes it well, but that just makes it seem like you also have to think about anatomy. Just tell the story that maybe Safira's head is looking more upwards than mine. Like she's, I know she's like stretching out her neck more. Like she's flying up. Mine is more like she's she's flying at an angle. Yours hmm. might be that she's actually flying up. Flying up. So it's true. I have to make sure my wings reflect reflect that then. I'm sure they will. It's, you know, you try to, if it doesn't go according to plan, you just kind of like, you improvise the story. You know? <laughs> Don't worry. Improvisation is key when painting. So true. So true. Improvisation um, is key. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna make the the tail like so the tail gets more narrow as it gets to the end. This is a very sad tail. It looks like a gecko who has just recently grown a tail he's lost. So I'm going to <laughs> make this look a little nicer, maybe a little longer. Just kind of play around with it. Now I've made it too thick. I lost control of the brush, but that's all right. It's okay. We'll, we'll figure it out. And when that happens, I usually just compensate somewhere's else. So. It'll be okay. Because then I have to remember that these are not all the details. Um, once you start putting those on there, it'll be, you know. Tim! He says, hello, ladies. My twin, hi, my twin Tom says hi. <laughs> Tim. And then who's that blonde guy? I'm gonna is that your cousin? Who's that? <laughs> um that's so Tim. He's a trip. Um onwards and upwards. I hope I haven't checked in on his channel recently. He's got over 700 subscribers not too long mm -hmm. ago. So hopefully, hopefully it's been growing since then. So I'm getting a really thick dragon. So I gotta calm down. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> My dragon's getting thick. Just ate a huge meal. Yeah, I was like, oh my goodness. So, um, but this this is good. We have a plate. Yeah, it does look like a snake. Exactly. So the evolution, I try to think of it like Pokemon. When it comes to making a dragon, it's like the evolution of the worm. The worm becomes a snake. The snake becomes like this battlesk kind of thing. Mm. which then becomes a dinosaur, then becomes the dragon um, and all of that stuff. So uh, that's called a happy accident, Tabitha. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more like... A little bit more. I can't stop. No, I won't. Oh, no. That's how I feel internally every time <laughs> I'm on this doing these streams. <laughs> and Nani Moose. Happy Saturday. And Dawn. Dawn, it's good to see. We are what are we painting today, Dawn? What we are attempting to paint today is this. A dragon with a rider from the Aragon series, the book series. Um, so are you have you been a fan of the books? Or are you new to that too? Um, yeah, I've been a fan of the books since like they came out when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I loved them. So I got them all. And I recently actually just finished reading. I went through the whole series again. Just because. Yeah. You know what's terrible is that I have a habit of reading or listening, like starting a series, even watching. I've noticed this about myself. And I love it, right? Big fan. I never finish the series. <laughs> Oh, like no. so Aragon, I listened to the first, I, I read and I listened to the first and the second. I think I started the third, never finished. Okay. And then I, like the Wheel of Time, been listening to that for over a decade. There's like, I don't know, 13, 14 books. I think I've gotten up to book seven, never finished. Oh, wow. Love the series. Love it. Never finished. Um, Stargate SG-1, the TV show. If anybody you've been, been around here long, they know I'm a huge fan. Huge. Love. Love. It's probably one of my, my favorite sci-fi shows ever, 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 ever. I got up to like season five and there's 10 seasons. Never finished. <laughs> I just go back and start it over again. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know what that is. There are very few series that I have ever, ever finished. So Bob Ross is jelly right now because he hasn't gotten any love in the clips. I know. I need to find like just the one. Well, I've got this one. And there's no secret to this. Anybody can paint. Anybody can paint. All you need is a dream in your heart, a little practice. And I really believe I Love that. it. But it's just this, the, I don't play that one that often because in my mind, it just sounds like Bob is beating us with dead branches. Right? <laughs> like using the brush. Yeah. And so I'm just like, I need to find a different clip. <laughs> um so so how's the body going do you uh do you have a, a thick snake right now right now? i have a thick snake i'm not into the tail 
Okay, that's all kinda, right. I kind of blooped it, so I'm getting the bloop. The bloop well, off. Megan, I'll tell you what we do. I did this a little while. We can always, when we're done, don't get so um, caught yeah. up with that. Is that, hang on, there we go. Oh, there we go. You, you tell it. it. I don't know what it got fuzzed. I understand. It's Should just, I it's, curl it down or up or keep it straight? Well, what I recommend, um, it's not bad. It's a nice long tail. Is that when this happens, so as we're, when we get near to finishing the dragon or thereabouts, we can actually return to our stencil brush and mm. kind of gently do some white over top of some of it. So uh. it looks like she's coming through the clouds rather than the fact that she's away from the clouds. Okay. Follow me for more, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, good tips. Good tips. Is this an Asian style dragon or a European style dragon? It's going to be a European style dragon. Although I should want to, I did the most, I sold it. I wish I had Ooh. taken a picture of it before I sold it. But I did the, one of the most amazing dragons in my life. And it was mm. a Chinese dragon. And it was um, very colorful. And it was weaving in and out of like these Korean mountains. Oh, mm. it was breathtaking. I'm like, why? <laughs> why uh i've just splattered myself with paint all right that's okay that's what we're all doing here so anyway here we go i will go ahead and take a little bit more we're going to start adding on the legs now you remember we had our little squiggly line here let me bring this back and yeah now i've got paint in my mouth hang on <laughs> Do not ingest paint, not, not tasty at all. So <laughs> the arms and legs are pretty simple. We'll make them look nicer, okay? I'm still continuing on with this flat brush. We're gonna refine everything in a little bit. But remember kind of where those ball sockets were, you know, she's your imagination. And again, there's really no wrong way to do this because the fact that dragons are all different. We saw the pictures, some don't have necks, some do. Um, is that we're going to come down a little bit here like so, okay? I'm just gonna do some line work like this, okay? Mm. Just, just little lines. So I come down a little bit, come at an angle slightly, and do everything small, because you can always make it bigger, and then I just come down again like so. Because okay. so, since she's flying through the sky, you know, it's kind of like when birds tuck their legs underneath, you know, yeah. the wind would drag it against, you know? And, and if it is up a little bit higher, it's again, it's okay, because it's almost it, like there's there's motion in the body. There's a story being told here. So it's okay. So even if she had an arm that was going, you know, up, you know, like, so it's fine because she's just almost like she's climbing through the sky. I don't recommend we do that, but you know. Mm -hmm. Ingesting pain is a no-no that happened to Calendar Man last year. Well, you know, it happens. And so that's the first leg. The back leg is essentially the same. But what we're going to do, we get a back leg here. We're going to make that go backwards just a little bit, a little bit more of an angle. So I find that socket where the hip is. And we're going to tuck the legs a little bit like so, and a foot at an angle, just like so. Okay, see, we got our, you know, mm. weird evolution. When we, when we get this taken care of, we're going to then, like we did with the body, we're going to fill it out like a little drumstick here. Ah, yes. You know, and then we're just going to add some little feet. So we, we got something, something going on here. Now, if I could just recreate that on my <laughs> creature. Angelus Draven, hello and good morning. He says, hey, hey. All right, so I'm going to try to find this. I'm going to go up in here, come down. And it's okay if you can't quite see the arm in the body. We're going to fix that, don't worry. Um, from here, I'm come down a little bit and back. I'm just going to make it a little wider already. Let's see where we're going. And we're gonna add some line work to this. So anything that looks a little bit sloppy, it's okay. Don't try to make it necessarily bigger. We can always clean that up with our line work. Okay. Let's 
So good morning, just editing and listening. Well, I'm glad that you're along. Appreciate you being, I appreciate everybody being here. I always want to say thank you so much for spending your Saturday mornings with me. Um, it's, it's always truly an honor to have people here. Um, I love having the guests, of course, but uh, it's really, it's really fun when people show up and actually, you know, want to watch and see what you're doing. And, and I greatly appreciate that. Um, I just recently hit over a thousand subscribers Woo! and that, yeah, I didn't know if that would ever really happen. And so I'm trying to make sure that I bring content for everybody that, you know, is enjoyable. It's fun to watch. I do a lot of shorts, but I also try to do some traveling videos where I take my artwork on the road. Um, going to be trying to do some art challenge videos and maybe even some relaxation painting videos and just whatever comes to mind. I'm going to try to do some sculpting. I've got a lot still planned, so I hope that you'll be along for the ride. Please be sure to hit the little bell icon. So if you're interested in any of that stuff, you can get notified of my upcoming events. And um, I'm hoping to in the future, and maybe Megan will join me. We'll see. We'll see how, how it goes after today if she enjoys it. <laughs> um, I would love to have like a painting stream, get like several different artists on here and just like hang out and chill when we create stuff and then showcase it afterwards. Um, good morning, Fandom Collective. Glad that you're here. Dave and his death beanie. Very interesting name. Sounds like quite the story behind that. Uh, I think I discovered you through a fellow Marine. Well, Excellent, excellent, excellent. He says he's new. I hope that you enjoy what we're doing. We're, we're trying to paint a dragon this morning. So, um, I don't know what's happening. You don't know what's happening? No, it's good. There we go. We've got, okay, I recommend you stop there. Maybe okay. clean up the elbow just a wee bit. How do I clean it up? Oh, like that little boop boop. Yeah, just a little bit. Just, just make it go into the leg at a nice little angle. But other than that, I think it looks fantastic. Um, Daniel says, Tabitha, congrats for the 1K. Well, so far I'm entertained. So far, so good. Excellent. Wonderful. I'll, I'll try to continue to do that. So, all right, we've got that one arm. I'm going to do that on the other side later on. Okay. Don't worry about the, uh, the legs on the other side. Hmm. Okay. Um, my name is based on brand merch and yes, I listened to a band named death. Okay. Well, don't we all, I mean, I don't, but maybe some other people do. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to do the back leg now. We're going to do the other legs later. There's a little secret thing we're about to do when we get done with these first sets of legs. I'm going to find where that leg would be. I'm going to come down. And again, also rely on what you've seen out in nature too, Megan. You know, you've mm -hmm. seen horses. You've seen yeah. dogs and cats. I assume you said you were homeschooled. Um, you know, maybe you didn't get out much. Um, <laughs> I'm, I know I didn't, but I, we did have a dog. <laughs> so, um, and just try to imagine like, okay, this is what this would look like. So, I'm, you know, we know that there would be joints and things like that. Again, it's all about observation. Here we go. I'm just going to, I've got basically this shape here. And I'm going to build off of it. Everything is going to be all about building off of a structure, even when it comes time to do the wings. It does look like the Loch Ness Monster in the sky. You know, maybe that's one reason why they've never really found Nessie is because of the fact that she might take off at night. You know, what if she could fly? What if she's like a sea serpent slash sky lizard? Like, why not? Why not? Um, just saying, she could have evolved, maybe. Jet Sparks 373 good morning, hello, welcome, welcome on board. We are trying to paint a dragon, which right now looks like a sea serpent, but don't worry. Data, I'll change here a little bit. I'm just going to build up my leg here. And as I always say, like, uh, it's just, it's always difficult to do these paintings because I'm like, man, you know, I like dragons. I'm actually pretty good at doing dragons. But then when it doesn't exactly come to the way you think it, it needs to, it's like, that's ah, okay. Again, it's mm -hmm. not about me. It's about hanging out, meeting people, trying new things, um, and helping other people in their journey as well. So you do paint 
So tell me why you thought I needed to teach you how to paint. I mostly do like landscape stuff. Oh, okay. So I, I get stuck in landscape world and need to challenge myself more mm -hmm. in okay. a different sort of a style. You know? So we are we are definitely doing that today. Um, yep. <laughs> no landscape. I mean, we've got the sky, but no land in sight. And we're doing a dragon. <laughs> yes. Oh, I like, like it. I have done, like, like I said, baby animals and whatnot, but. Now, what mediums do you usually work with? Do you work with acrylic as well? Usually acrylic and a little bit of watercolor. Interesting. Okay, I don't really dabble in the watercolor myself. I'm like a acrylic oil kind of gal. Mrs. R2, the icky. Good Hi. morning. She said, my reminder didn't come up. I'll have to rewatch from the beginning. Oh, it's it's a trip in the half, Mrs. R2. <laughs> it's a trip in the half in the beginning. Uh, I won't do any spoilers, but if you guys didn't catch the beginning of this show, you're going to either cringe or laugh or maybe weep out of sympathy um, in the first, like, five minutes <laughs> of this show. Um, we's all experiencing some technical difficulties this morning. Yeah. But I'm getting, I'm happier with the legs. Just remember, so one of the things about the dragons that is so crucial and that we're getting all this practice in, so we're going to work on, so that we can work on something more fantastic later on that's more important, are the wings. Like, the beauty and the splendor of a dragon, of course, is its scales, like its color, mm -hmm. and then its, its wingspan. So don't focus so much, again, on the legs. You'd be surprised what that, that line work will do for our creation. Um, we add that black outline. I'm not a huge person for outlining. It's not my thing. If anybody ever looks at like my chibis and stuff like that, I don't outline. That's something that mm -hmm. I think kind of separates me from a lot of different people. But sometimes it helps. Sometimes it does. So if our legs are looking a little wonky, it's okay. Right now our painting I feel is like it's quite wonky, but. No, it's good. No, we can tell that this is a lizard-like creature. So mm -hmm. we are on the right track. Um, yeah, I. Our dragons are not going to look very fantastic. They're not going to look mesmerizing at all here in the beginning. And that's totally fine. So don't worry. You're on the right track. If it looks weird and a little bit ugly, good. Um, <laughs> it's a, kind of supposed to be like humans. You know, we don't really start out looking the best. And then as yeah. we grow and develop, some of us make it and some of us don't. But <laughs> you know what I'm trying. Um, um, okay. So on a different note. So now what we're going to do, we're going to elevate our dragon. We, we've built up a quite a bit of confidence. We're getting better with the use of our brush. So right now we're going to do a little bit of blending. So I'm leaving some blue on my brush here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go in and get just a wee bit of white on one end. Just like a little, little corner. Well, my white's starting to congeal. It's having a hard time coming up. Okay, just a little bit there. Go back into my blue, like so. We can see that. I've got a little bit of white on there. Mm -hmm. Or as Bob would say, white. Um, and I'm going to pat it on my, uh, what's it called? Palette. <laughs> just a little bit, not much, just so that the blue and the white meet a little bit. And I'm going to start way back up at the head. Mm. Okay. And now we know where to go. It's just taking our time, making it look beautiful. We're going to do the underbelly. And it's like a little race car following the racetrack. I start here. I line my brush up and I come down the neck and just keep that line, that brightness underneath. Can you see that? Does that show up Yeah. nicely? Okay. And of course, I want to stop at the arm. We don't want the belly to go through the arm. I'm going to lighten this up more so it's a little bit easier to see. There we go. And that is going to amplify your dragon significantly. It's going to start making the wonky things look a little bit more insignificant um, because this is adding a little bit more drama, a little more realism to it. Hopefully. If you're doing it right, Megan, come on. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding. <laughs> oh my goodness. And again, you guys can follow Megan on Twitter. There, Megan and Lee, Megan underscore 
it's like Meg underscore and Meg underscore Lee. <laughs> yes, I couldn't get like there's so many Meg and Lees out there apparently. I couldn't get my name in a normal way. In a normal way, it's. <laughs> Um, and yeah, and of course, if you like some of my artwork and you, you follow me on like Instagram and Twitter and stuff like that, you guys can find um, find me on Etsy and get some new stuff. I've got some new stuff in the shop today. Uh, I never want my belly to go through my arm. That would be weird. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so when you get done with the neck and it looks pretty, we like this. It's, it's looking fantastic. I'm going to jump over the arm and of course carry on through the belly and stop when I get to the other leg. Um, get this a little bit brighter here. Is it is it helping your painting? Or are you more impressed so. more impressed with yourself now? Uh, Joker says he follows you and he is also subscribed to you. Oh thank you Joker. I think I knew that. <laughs> Again, it's kind of hard to keep up with everybody. It really is. I always feel bad. <laughs> I know. And then you get nervous. You go to these meetups and you're like, I don't oh, know man. you. All these people are going to be like, hey, it's me. And I'll be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, who are you? <laughs> yeah. And I'm so bad with names. Like, I'm oh. so bad with names. I'm pretty good with names, but. I get nervous around people sometimes. I think it'd be fun to go to one of these meetups. It's um, definitely fun. It really, really is. But I'm just, I get nervous in crowds. Yeah. And it's not like I can't handle it. It's not like I have, like, I seize up or anything like that. Um, it's not like I have necessarily, like, anxiety issues that some people, unfortunately, have, struggle with. It's just, like, I don't, I don't like awkward silence. If I don't know anybody there, I hate feeling like, you know, a wallflower. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's like, okay, well, I don't know anybody. And I know you can meet people. I'm just, I'm not a go out of my way, talk to everybody. I, I don't know people. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I get that. Do you have issues with that? I oh, don't. I'm not good in crowds. Like, the more people are, there are, the less I talk. Yeah. But I found that meetup I went to, like, because I was basically was um like as it was coming up, I kept telling people like on my streams and whatever, I was saying, just come up to me and if you and say hi to me because I'm really bad with names, and also people in your chat like they have an avatar or something, so mm -hmm. you never yeah. know what they look like in real life. Yes, is that kind of scary? <laughs> it kind of is because I'm like, they're saying that they're this person, and I'm gonna trust that they are. <laughs> right, you're hoping. Well, that's. It's so interesting. Um, <laughs> what? Well, you know, so would you consider yourself like introverted? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So, so how, and by the way, once you get done with the belly, we're going to carry on to the tail, of course, you know, consistency here. Um, what made you decide to like, get over that discomfort of meeting people you don't know well just I don't know, there's a lot of things i started reading dr jordan peterson um and it's interesting because i his stuff is a lot about like behavior human behavior okay and it's interesting because i i work um like my day job is I'm a behavior interventionist. I work with kids on the spectrum and I oh. do like, it's like basically behavior change therapy. And it's so funny because it's, I just look at myself and go, wow, I'm doing this job in my daily life, but I never applied it to my own personal life. Ooh, yeah. What a revelation. Right. <laughs> it was like such a dumb moment. I went, you know what? There's things about me. Like I don't like that. I'm uncomfortable in crowds and I don't like that. It like, takes mm -hmm. me a long time to get my thoughts across to people mm -hmm. so I need to put myself in situations where like you just are constantly practicing basically yeah practicing um speaking your opinion practicing conversation um yeah yeah that was, that was part of it just like putting myself in situations that give me or to give me discomfort Mm -hmm. But in a good way. But yes, in a good way. 
that's kind of like what it is for me, like on YouTube and, and stuff like that. Like when I first started streaming, like on inside the booth, mm -hmm. um, like that was when I got invited before I became a team member there, it was just like, I don't know how to prepare for this. Like, I just, I don't like, for me, I don't like doing things. <laughs> this is going to sound so silly, but I think everybody can kind of understand where I'm coming from. I, I don't like doing things or going places that I've never been been before like by mm -hmm. myself because I don't know what to anticipate yeah. I don't like being let me put it this way I don't like being unprepared for stuff and obviously you can't um <laughs> you can't do things until you've done them right you don't know what yes, to anticipate until you've actually exactly. done it and that was really hard so even even jumping onto a podcast, I've always thought it'd be fun to do something like that. And then God just kind of opened up this opportunity for me years later with uh, Dan inviting me onto his stream. And I enjoy it. That's the funny thing. I always tell people like my spirit animal is Smeagol, is Gollum. What? Because I'm like, I don't have like two different personalities, but I tell people, I'm like, I've got like, I just, I do. It's almost like I have that because... I love adventure and I love travel and I enjoy talking to people. But at the same time, I really love staying home. I don't like being out that much mm -hmm. and I can only handle people for a really long time. And like the fewer people, the better. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. So I'm always kind of like this duplicit person. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my biggest thing is like, so people don't think that I'm introverted because I'm friendly and yes. conversational and stuff like that. But I am like, after I get done, even with these streams, like it's in my head. And if I don't process my day, um, it just stays with me. I have to yeah. think about like almost every conversation that I've had throughout the day. And if I have more days of interaction with people and I don't have time, like it wears me out. And mm -hmm. I need several days to process these several days yes. with the people that I had, con you know, been in contact with. And it just wears me out mentally and even physically. Like, I just mm -hmm. like, I just need to sit on the couch and watch TV so that my mind is not occupied. Yeah. However, if I don't think about, but you know, <laughs> what I've had, you know, it's just, it, I think everybody has a little something. I see Heron of Alexandria mm -hmm. says, I have social anxiety. I am working on getting over it though. Yeah. You do yeah. need to put yourself in, in uncomfortable, healthy, uncomfortable positions because a lot of times we're just so crippled by fear. And I love, it's a terrible movie. Like it's not a well-made movie at all is, um, after earth with Will Smith and his son, Jaden. <laughs> and, um, there's a quote in there though that I actually like took to heart and it says fear how does it go Oh shoot now now that I, this pivotal moment I can't remember it but it basically was saying that fear is not real mm. right you know it, it's like being afraid is is real but like your fears are not real if you will mm. because and I I wish I had the exact quote now now this is going to bother me i'll look it up later but basically it's just saying that you know that's what it was fear is not real don't get me wrong danger is of course they were fighting you know like animals and stuff like that yeah but it just kind of got me thinking it's like yeah we're most of the time we're crippled by fear of the unknown so we just never do it we always think of the worst case scenario what if that person doesn't like me mm -hmm. what if i get lost <laughs> what if what if there's traffic? You know, we basically yeah. make up excuses to stay comfortable. And so this year was a really great year for me. The fact that I went to Florida by myself, met, like I actually got to meet Drunk 3PO in Florida. And that was way out of my comfort zone. I'm meeting people that I've never met before. Mm -hmm. I'm going to a place I've never been before. But I was like, you know, after 2020, I'm like, I need to step out. I, I love to travel. Why am I not doing it? Mm -hmm why and uh, i encourage anybody you know again i i tell people i'm socially awkward they're like i don't think so i'm like you don't understand what's going inside yeah it's <laughs> like I, i'm i'm just faking it you don't know i'm faking like, it. i just feel like i'm the biggest idiot and that i just need to shut up but i have i hate awkward silence so i tend to talk a lot even though it's not necessarily that i want to mm. i'm like aware of 
the people in the room and I just don't want people to feel uncomfortable. So I make myself uncomfortable by talking a lot so other people don't feel uncomfortable. It's, it's a whole thing up here. It's a whole mm. thing. I get it. It's a whole thing, people. Um, but anyway, how's that was a lot about Tabitha. See, now I'm going to have to process that after the end of the show and be like, I just I liked it. I liked it. <laughs> this is my, this is my, oh. this is how it's looking. That looks great. Don't that you think it looks so much better? Actually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. See, I can hear it in your voice. Exactly. It helps. Um, uh, Joker says, I don't go to the ocean because of my fear of the real danger of sharks. This is true. I just recently went to the beach. I have a huge fear of things in the darkness, things living mm. in the water. Like, I don't like things touching my feet. I have a weird phobia about that, too. But I'm like, I love being in the ocean. Here it is. I love being in the ocean. <laughs> so I will go about hip deep or so like that. And I just sit in the ocean. I'm like, I have enough power that I could, like, jump out. I'm like, I can't always live in this idea that something's going to get me. <laughs> Yeah. All right. So that being said, enough of that philosophical <laughs> jargon. I'm going to make sure that I leave some of that paint on my brush. And I'm actually going to lighten my blue just a little bit. So it is a little bit darker than the belly, but brighter than the, the leg. And we're going to create okay. the second set of legs. Okay. Um, oh. But we're going to do in a slightly different color. So that way it looks like it's the inner portion of the leg and it separates it from you know, the other one. Little, mm, little mm. secret little trick there mm, mm. i'll take the swimming pool any day yes but i have myself and my i ha, i know somebody else like this once it gets in your head like i've had a fear of sharks in the pool too <laughs> anybody else <laughs> <laughs> like you get that thought in your head and you're like holy crap and i gotta get out of here and then i gotta calm myself down i'm like that stupid tabitha it, would, it wouldn't survive in here how would it even get you can't even see it <laughs> um so we're just gonna create recreate the shape of same thing that we've done before just on the other side give a little bit of a gap here and now we know what to do so i'm just going to come down a little bit and that might be a little bit too bright i might darken it up a little bit but this is essentially the same thing that we're going to do put some little claws there um dave says that we megan you and i seem to be cool to hang out with Aww. I'm glad that we give you Thanks. that impression. I'm sure Megan's great. Me, on the other hand. Uh, no, you are great. Expect some awkward conversations because I I, I talk about weird things. But, okay, chat. This is how Tabitha's mind works. And I legitimately want to know. Okay, this is how my mind works. I was driving in the car the other day. At what point does clothing stop being brand new? I'll give you guys time to think. Okay, like I, I actually want to know what your answers are. Um, Mrs. R2 says, have you read Breeny Brown's books? Brian, Breeny? She describes having the courage to show up when you can't control the outcome. Yes, Ooh, and amen. Like that is good. really difficult for me. Um, comics and Cuts, but it's Danny. Was up. Hi. I was on her channel not too long ago and she released this morning, opening day, the premiere of her and I working together on a Bob Ross painting, but it's not what you think. There's a twist. So I encourage anybody that when this show's done, go check out Comic and Cosmetics on YouTube. You can also find her on Twitter and check out our compilation there. It was it was a good time. Excuse the puppies that are in screaming in that video. Mm -hmm. um, I got my hands cut, uh, hands full today. They're sleeping from what I understand right now. So uh, that's why there's no yipping and things like that. Um, let's see. What a twist. That's right. So Herod of Alexandria says after the, that clothing stops being brand new after the first time you wear it. That's her opinion there. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. okay. I wasn't sure, is it after the first time you wear it? Is it after the first stain? Or is it after the first washing? Mm. These are the questions I ponder. The questions of the universe. What would you say, Megan? If somebody, like me, posed this ridiculous question to you at a meetup? <laughs> I would say it's after the first time you wear it. Okay. After the first time you wear it, yeah, I can see. see I that. like those kind of questions though, because yeah. like 
you can ask all the normal, like, boring questions, like, what's your day job, and blah, 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 <laughs> but, but they're all the same, but you ask a very interesting question, and, and, and it kind of opens it up for conversation com- yeah. yeah completely new and and unique conversation and then you remember those conversations well and it's a great it's a great conversation starter because it makes people like it makes people laugh because it's like it's a really it's a silly question yeah and it's but, un- unexpected exactly it's unexpected and then all of a sudden people start having opinions and then you've got this discourse coming like, yes. I don't think so. What happens if this? And suddenly we're, and then we're laughing because suddenly we're talking about, and maybe sometimes even arguing about clothing when it stops being brand new. Um, but because, then you also get more insight to who somebody truly is as a person. See, exactly. Yeah, you learn. Exactly. That's what I think. You learn about other people then that too. Um, I, I was, I was a little bit on the fence about it. So here's the other thing. If somebody buys it, never wears it and then gives it to somebody else is it still brand new Mm. it's brand new to the somebody else Mm. so even if it still has tags for the original person that purchased it it's not brand new to them anymore maybe not i don't know (laughs) and it's, it's it's one of those questions that has no answer yeah I know it's a ridiculous question. My brother and I do questions like that all the time. And it just, or my family, like we just, just come up with stuff. Um, even with anxiety, I go scuba diving off the coast here in California. That is so cool. I would love Ooh, to do scuba that's diving. Awesome. I do have a fear of things in the ocean, but it would be so beautiful to see it. Um, it doesn't help if you've seen Jaws at a young age before you go to the beach or have some color floaty, uh, what float as the boy that got eaten. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jaws, when I watched it, because I do have a fear, a healthy fear and respect of sharks, um, Jaws did not scare me because it was already the fears that I had. So <laughs> that's funny. Um, wearing it in a hot, on a hot summer day definitely makes it less brand new. That's for sure. Yes, for sure. Oh, Danny says it doesn't have a wrong answer or it has a million answers. Exactly. It's like the multiverse of madness questions. Exactly. Rogue Attraction, how are you? Hi, Rogue. Hope you enjoyed Halloween Horror Nights last night. I got to watch that. Yeah, it was pretty, pretty neat. Pretty neat to watch. Um, so how's the how's the dragon coming? Because we're about to do one of them. No pressure here. We're about I, to- I almost got my back leg done. I, I was I was being a little scaredy cat and then I got distracted. <gasps> That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> The nerve. Oh, oh, I need to finish my leg. He looks very much like they, they she uh, got drumstick legs. Yeah, they are drumstick. That's why I always tell the kids, like, make drumsticks. Max, I didn't realize you're in Australia. Well, good evening. Have a great night. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Rogue Attraction says he's a bit hungover, to be honest. Well, oh, oh, oh. drink some water and go to bed after after the stream. <laughs> We are going to embark on the wingspan once. Um, okay. Here's my legs. I'm still not liking the, the front oh, paw. But Very nice. Again, good. we're going to clean all it up, and we're about to do what is really the most important part. Okay. Um, I know Scary still- part. I know we don't still we still don't have a leg or excuse me we still don't have a head but that's going to come later. Um, we want to give ourselves plenty of wiggle room when it comes to the wings and stuff like that. So, as with everything that we've uh, we've been doing, we start with a little structure, a little bit of structure first. These wings, I will admit, are a little bit more. I don't want to say difficult, but it, because of the angle, I guess you could say it that it's a little bit more difficult, but not really, because I'm going to show you again the step-by-step. The hardest part, really, for the wing is this section here. And it's not about the fact that it's hard to do. It's difficult to remember to put this little line here to make it look like the wings are basically cupped a little bit. Mm. So, but we have our reference painting, so we will go back to that in a second. All right. So, again, just like with our, our dragon here, it's going to be 
this little structure. I'm going to get a little bit more blue in my brush, not a lot. And I'm going to let you know, it's going to look kind of like a broken umbrella here in the beginning. So if it looks ugly, okay. again, that's part of, part of the process. Um, so we want to make sure we have a little bit of room for our rider. So I just kind of imagine him being up here towards the shoulder blade area. I come down just a little bit. And I'm going to hold my brush at an angle, and we're just going to kind of come back this way, like so. Just going to kind of angle like this. And again, if your wing doesn't look quite like mine, it's okay because we can pretend like the wingspan is the wings are doing something. They're they're fluttering, they're opening up. It's it's all good. My line was a little thicker than yours, but it's there. That's okay. Yeah, I'm good with it. it. You can uh, cover it up. So I'm going to swoop up. Make sure I have space enough for the rest of the wing here. So we got our swoosh. And I'm going to just curve down. I'm a little bit close to my edge, but that's okay. I wish I had a little bit more space on my canvas. So I would have done a slightly different shape here, but that's okay. Still going to be great. Okay. 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 And then here comes the broken umbrella bits. Basically those little pieces on the inside. We're going to start at this corner. Make them a little short here. I'm just going to go ahead and do them so you can see. Heron of Alexandria says, I made a really good Greek omelet just now. You're making me very hungry because I am hungry. Greek omelet. Wow. Sounds fantastic. I don't know. I literally just grabbed a cookie because <laughs> that was my breakfast and, and then it was cake. I grabbed a <laughs> cup of joe and that was my breakfast thus far. It's not really the greatest thing. And then I'm going to put a little bit of a curve here too. We're getting a lot of movement in our wings. So like I said, this isn't very pretty. It kind of looks like a weird stick being broken in half or something like that. But that's okay. We's going to make it look pretty. Oh, my line went thick. Whoopsie. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> okay, clean it up. It's okay. Okay. All right. We're happy. I think so. We're happy with our ugliness? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> My biggest deal is not doing too much and just letting the painting kind of right. like going with the painting instead of trying to control it. You know what I'm saying? Yes, I do. Um, so here we go. We, we grabbed the one side. I'm just going to like let that hang out for a second. And then I'm kind of come up here to the other side. And this wing, this wing is what confuses people because of the fact that you don't really see much of it, right? Your main right. focus is yes. this wing. So really, you see here, we've just got this curve. And then we're going to come back down, and that's pretty much it. So we're just going to go ahead and get that knocked out of the way. And it's just above where the riders are. You is it attached to the other wing? Could you repeat that question? <laughs> the sec the the wing on the other side. Does it come like directly out of where the first ring wing did, or is it more like off? It's a little bit the... above. Here okay. we go. Okay. I'm going to go up this way, and it's just a little bit above, and so we're going to give it. Okay. Like so. I'm just going to do that because we're going to do a little bit of blending and things like that in a second. We'll return to these these different wings. Gotcha. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, Heron. But really I, 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 I get so busy, which is terrible, I know. I get so busy. And like when I wake up, a lot of times I, I go through different motions. But a lot of times when I wake up, I hate to take the time to do something. I just want to get started with work. And so since I'm like you know, I'm, I'm self-employed. So everything I do, I rely on myself. And actually I think homeschooling really helped with that, to be honest. Um, cause like, if you, you got to do the work, you got to put it in there. Nobody's necessarily making you do it. You, do it. <laughs> you don't have a classroom to compete with, you know? And yeah. so, um, 
But like a lot of times I try to wake up and like grab a cup of coffee, do some devotion, spend some time with Jesus and then get my day started. But there are some days where I just, I want to just get started with work and I will do my devotions later on or something like that. But like, I just like to get up and work, man. Just go. Get it done. I hate to slowly go into the morning because to me, it's like, then I might as well just stay in bed. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so, okay. So we just continue with the blue because we're about to do some blending here. I'm going to make this section, um, a little bit wider, not much, just like so and fill us in. (laughs) Are you nervous? You got hiccups. That's what I thought. Okay. She's nervous guys. My mother does devotions too, Dreaming Tent. Well, good, good, good. It's important to spend time with Jesus. Um, So we get that little snippet done there. And then you remember that line I told you that it's not difficult to do, it's difficult to remember because it's so vital. Is that I'm just going to make this line a little bit bolder right here so it looks like it's curved in. And once we put the different colors inside the wing. It's going to make all the difference. And um, I made just a little bit of this line a little bit thicker as well. Concentrating. That's when everybody gets real quiet. Got to mm-hmm. focus, Leonard. Got to focus. Um, okay. Man, everybody's talking about their food now. Comics and cosmetics. I had an everything bagel sandwich with mm-hmm. sausage, eggs, and gouda. Now, if you would have let the gouda off, I've been like, yes. I don't like cheese, but oh. you know, at this point, I'd even eat it with the with the gouda, 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 whatever people pronounce it as. I think we say gouda. People say Gouda. I don't know. It's Dutch. Who cares? Um, <laughs> so with this, we're going to kind of create a little bit of a, of a purplish tone, a pinkish purple tone for the, the inner portion of the wings. I don't want it to just be a bunch of light blue. I want there to be a little bit of the, how do you not like cheese? I know this is the question everybody asks me. Look, it's my cross to bear. Okay. I don't know what it is. I can't. It's the texture of the cheese. The flavor tastes amazing. And I've been trying different cheeses. For the past couple of years, brie cheese and cheddar. Cheddar is my least favorite. Swiss is so I can't handle the texture. It's too much like eating gelatin or wax, depending on which one it is. I can't. Interesting. I can't do it. Goat cheese, amazing. Can't eat it. Um, I love goat cheese. <laughs> I don't mind if it's sprinkled lightly in a salad or something like that, <laughs> but there's got to be other elements to it. But I'm going to take my little bit of blue here, get a wee bit of white, and just a smidge of per- uh, red. Because red can really easily take over. And I still wanted to have a blue element, but I wanted to have like this, this sheen. Okay. Um, like, well, to give the illusion of like a sheen. I don't know if we can see the difference. Mm. Mm-hmm. It it still looks like light blue, but there is like a little bit of more of a pink and purple. It just depends on the camera. Let's see if I can change it up a little bit here. It's I don't want it to be. Okay. That's a little bit grayish too, because, you know, but anyway, so what we're going to do now is just make some little, little loops here. Well, not really loops, but uh, what about blue cheese? Yeah. I'm not a huge fan. It's very strong. Again, the flavors are not bad for a lot of cheese. I can handle the texture. So I'm going to start right over here, Megan, and we're just going to drag our brush and angle it into little points and meet like so. And we'll do that for each little little thing. And that's going to start making it look less like a broken umbrella and more like a dragon wing. <laughs> and again, we'll clean up any little smidges and things like that later on. 
I have to tell myself that too. Best breakfast is bacon with more bacon. Mm. I do like, I think, okay, guys. So what is your ideal breakfast? Um, buffet is an acceptable answer as well. But um, <laughs> I I do love me, like if I was going to have the perfect breakfast, I would have a side of scrambled eggs over easy eggs, sausage links. Mm. bacon a bagel with butter and some cantaloupe wow yes two two things of eggs some bake two things of meat <laughs> some bread and some fruit um that would be like my ideal breakfast and may maybe throw in a waffle maybe <laughs> love it um Let's see. Somebody says, ideal breakfast, bacon, more bacon. Ideal breakfast, Bloody Mary with bacon strip instead of a celery stock. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, Danny said she got to go. Her first client is there. You go take care. You go be your boss lady. She is a hardworking gal. I tell you what, I believe that she is going to be up and coming in the ranks of YouTube because of the effort that she puts into her Patreon, her Twitter, her Aww. YouTube, her TikTok. Like she is a hard, not only is she hardworking on her social media platform, but then she runs her own business for haircutting. And mm. I mean, like she, I just like, I do, I admire her because I'm just like, she's going at it all the time. And she has some really top quality um edits and and transitions and different things like that in her video it's pretty cool um so i'm gonna do a little bit of a strip here on the inside kind of get it it's a little bit wider and then get a little narrow as it comes in here is that making your dragon look better are we more happy with yeah the, uh, yeah starting to come to life to come chicken along. and waffles best breakfast and brunch I don't mind me some chicken and waffles at first. You know, I live in the South. I am not from the South. I will reiterate that over and over again. Um, but I tell you what, the first time I had chicken and waffles, I'm like, that sounds weird, but it was good. <laughs> I had never heard of that till I moved down here because, like, I'm from Canada. So, ah. like, I literally was like, what? <laughs> it is like lunch and dinner food. What are you doing? Yeah, I've never had it for breakfast. I had it as like a meal, like in for dinner or lunch or something like that. Um, it was I love strange. Belgian waffles with strawberry. Oh, strawberries and whipped cream on. Oh, so good. It's a good breakfast. Too. This is why Heron needs to start her food channel. Mm. Oh, there you go. Anybody could. Once I tried nachos on ice cream at the same time, it wasn't that bad, although I wasn't sober. Okay, well, maybe try it again and see what happens. I tell you, one of my favorite vanilla to ice cream toppings is, hear me out, bacon. Bacon bits. Because you get sweet and savory at the same time. Okay. And it's really good. I've actually had chocolate covered bacon. I was at a vendor event one time and the tent next to me was selling um, sweets and they had chocolate dipped bacon and it was so good. And I put some bacon bits on my vanilla ice cream one time. I was like, this is amazing because like I said, you get the sweet and all of a sudden just a little bit of that saltiness to it. Yeah. Okay. All right, when we do our little chambers in here, I'm going to stroke downwards and be very intentional with the pattern that I create because I don't want to lose necessarily the, the chambers. So I, okay. I'm going to go in those same direction and I'm going to probably add a little bit of lightness to, to some of the areas like, uh, oh, if my white would stop congealing. It's a little bit much. Here we go. Just so it mixes things up. So it looks like the, the skin's kind of thin and thick in some areas. So you see, mm. I've got some streaks going on right here. It just makes it look like the folds of the, of the um, skin. So there's movement. We'll need to remember where each of these chambers are later on. So.
My food channel would mostly be ancient and historical recipes. Please do. I'm that telling you what, fun. there is a guy that does um, depression era recipes to see if they actually work and how good they are. And he's Ooh. actually amazed. Like they used a lot of potatoes and things like that back then. And so he made like a potato pound cake or something mm -hmm. like that. And he said it was actually really good. So wow. stuff like this would actually be really great. And not to be all conspiratorial and whatever, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying we all could maybe take a page out of some of these um, recipes because food getting yeah. expensive. So yeah. <laughs> if we could maybe find how people did it in the olden days, it might be a little cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. Make a patty melt, but instead of a thousand island dressing, use peanut butter. Um, <laughs> candy bacon. Put bacon on a tray and put brown sugar on it and put it in the oven. I could see where that would be good. I do. Yeah, I could see that. All right, let me get this section a little darker here. I'm going to make this corner a little bit darker because of, of the fold, it's going to be in the shadows. But not too much darker. And that's really just, you know, you're learning about shading and highlighting. I'm sure as Megan's been going along, she's been in injecting her own, you know, knowledge um, in there somewhere. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, like, if you're a painter, it just kind of comes, comes through. JT! Late night with Cap. Good evening. Good morning. Good morning. Oops. Depression era onion burgers are actually pretty good. I'm sure depending on what you couple with it, it could very well be. Yeah, my wings are poor Safira. Her wings are kind of cramped together because I put I did I ran out of space. <laughs> <laughs> over here so this i really would love for this to actually be longer over here so like she's gliding but i'm just going to pretend that she's flapping she's flapping she is flapping and uh and then over here even though we don't have a head i'm just going to go ahead and do this so you can see i'm going to take this little corner and go down this way and fill in here with this some of our wing might disappear when we paint the head on here, but that's okay. We, we do this just again so we have a place to start, know where we're going. And um, you want to fill in the gap anyway, so that way you don't have to worry about it later. Kind mm. of thing. Joker Voice has to go get some groceries. Thank you for stopping by, Joker. I hope that you enjoy your grocery route. <laughs> um, it's not always the most fun job, but it's got to get done, right? And some people, some people like it. So get some out of the house. There we go. So do you think you'll always stick with comic book reviews or do you think you might end up doing like movies or uh, book reviews too? Um, I definitely thought about doing like, um, like TV show, like, um, cause I do movie reviews with, uh, Steven from freeze peach gaming on Friday nights. Oh, okay. Um, so but I've always thought about doing like TV shows, like Saturday morning cartoons or something. Yeah. You know, because I never had that growing up. So that would kind of be interesting. We we it's had TV fun. when we were kids. I we grew up Baptist as well. Um, we had TV when we grew up, but we went through a phase when we were teenagers where we didn't have TV. And actually that was really nice because it brought us closer together as a family. Um, since our main source of entertainment was not there anymore. Yeah. Um, we learned to, we listened to a lot of audiobooks, like a lot. That's where we discovered the wheel of time and like Aragon and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And then we would, we would craft, like we would, it sounds so little house in the prairie or something. Yes. Like that, but, but like, literally like my mom, just because I was curious, like she would teach, she taught me how to crochet. So I started learning how to crochet blankets. 
right? Nice. And I mean, it's not a bad thing to learn. It's actually, oh, I'm no. really proud of the fact that I can make a blanket or a pot holder or whatever. Yeah. But I learned to crochet or I did learn to embroider, not because we were homespun backwoods weirdos. We weren't like we were, mm -hmm. we were, we weren't like that. Some people are, that's fine. But I'm like, we, we bought clothes. We didn't just make all of our own clothes, but like we yeah. just took the time to kind of learn some self-sufficient skills and then we would do puzzles and and again i know it sounds very little house in the prairie but it actually was really nice and that's also where i discovered my my love of colors and like and like coloring because i would sit in my room and i would get those giant felt posters yes and i would color for hours and hours listening to music or stories or things like that and it was just it was good because i think it just helped us to to learn how to entertain ourselves, mm -hmm. but we were still learning things as we, as we went along. And eventually we got TV again, you know, we have nothing against TV. We like movies and stuff like that, but it was, Tabitha was a tree folk with no trapper keeper. That's right. I don't, I didn't know what trapper keepers were until JT told me. I grew up in a third world country. That's different. <laughs> Culture Casino. Good morning. How are you today? Self-sufficiency will be key to survival in the next two years. We, I, I agree that we do. We need to take more time to learn about agriculture and, and how to mend our own stuff. Like if you yeah. can't sew on a button, you need to at least know how to sew on a button. You don't have to do it well. You just need to know how. <laughs> um, but it's good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. We're doing a dragon some things are slightly different, but that's okay because it's just different phases of the dragon. You'll notice that the background is a completely different color because we were just like, we ain't doing mauve grandma pink here. Um, <laughs> I mean, mauve is great until it's not. We so, love mauve, but okay. I feel you got everything? We got a headless mind. dragon? Yeah. I got. Hmm. Oh, hang on. Let's bring it on. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, uh, what I would recommend, yes. I know mine is kind of skimpy as well here in this mm. little section. Let me bring this over here. This section here, I would recommend for Why? you because yours you know, is a slightly different shape than mine. If yeah. you would take that pink and just make it a little bit wider here yourself on yours. Oh, okay. Just make it look like instead of just the thinness of the, the backside of the wing, you get yeah. a little bit of the drooping of the skin from the wing itself. Oh, Nothing okay. too thick. And make sure it tapers. Like it's thick here. Not too thick, but it's thicker here and it tapers into the blue. Give it a try. Uh, JT says, I'm just going to hire Maria, the geeky crochet, to, I guess, mend and do all his <laughs> stuff. Uh, how much is she going to charge for that? I was going to say. You know. I was going to make a joke, and I thought, she's not here to defend herself, so I'll just save that for another, <laughs> another time. Uh, when, here's the exciting part, Megan, we're coming down to it. When you are done with that and you're liking how it's going, we're going to retire this brush and move on to our, our last brush, or depending on how many you brought. I brought two just because detail brushes can be fickle creatures. But we're going to move on to a detail brush and finish off our dragon. We're going to make the dragon head, make the rider. Very nervous about the dragon head. It's going to be great. I've guided you thus far. We'll make you it. You have. Um, <laughs> hopefully there's some confidence in me a little bit. Um, we're going to do the dragon head, the rider, and then outline. And that's that's all we need to do. I mean, we're going to put, of course, some details on the dragon, like the... the um, claws and teeth and stuff like that but we're, we're coming down to it we's almost done i feel like i'm such a slow painter no 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 um it's all good i mean we got started late too like i see that we're almost at the two and a half hour mark and i try I'm, I'm trying to not to go that long but it's just it's hard when you're painting and of course, when you're chit chatting at the same time, and especially if somebody, not you, but like other people, you know, don't have much painting experience. We need to make it fatter. No, that's okay. good. That okay. was good. Cause yeah, you need something to be able to support that wing. That's another one of those things where it's like something's off about it, but I can't figure out what it is. And it really yeah. just might have to do with the technical aspect there. So switching over to the detail brush. Here we okay. go. 
Let me bring back our head, our, our original painting here. I painted this on actual canvas. That's why it's all floppy. So we're just going to, to start with the mouth area and just kind of create all of that and then go into a jaw and finesse the rest of it. Okay, I know that seems daunting, but I'm just going to go yeah. into my, my blue and roll my paint around in here. Oh, a little too much on the edge. And now this is where we can decide, is the neck too long? How, okay. we, how we feeling about this? I think my neck is just a wee bit long. Like if I put my head right here, if I take two fingers and imagine that's the head, I can decide. I mean, dragons do have long heads, but I'm like, is this, this is too long. So it's okay. So I'm just going to set it back a little bit. And I think this would be better. Okay. And so most of that's already been painted. So I'm just going to sketch out, if you will, a little design. I'm going to make line here it's, sometimes i can't think of what the right words are so i'm just going to paint this and let you you look at it so here we go we're going to build up and over and create a little lump like so hmm. we're just going to build up culture casino says i am always envious of those who can draw and paint well if you want to learn how to paint sir Let's do something. I could teach you how to paint anything. Anything. Baby steps, of course, if you don't know how, but baby steps. This is a little bit too down. Looks a little bit snorky. <laughs> I feel like that's what mine is, too. It's okay. Come back. We'll get this into a jaw. This head's going to be weird. I can already tell. <laughs> I know <laughs> mine is. That's okay. I'm I'm confident I can bring it around. No, okay. I, I got it. All right, here we go. I'm gonna leave that so we can look at it for a little bit. This part reminds me of those um I don't know what they're called. Those long neck dinosaurs that like mm -hmm. in the water. Yes, I have no idea what they're called either. They keep coming up with new dinosaurs all the time. So I'm like, I don't I don't know. But it's kind of a horse shape. Maybe that might help. It's almost like this lizard horse shape. Um, yeah. And we're going to, you know, it's going to really help when we start doing with the head, what we did with the wings and the body. Right now we're just getting a shape down, a structure, and then we're going to add some details to it. It's really going to bring everything um, and around to make it pop. It's all going to be good. The Brachiosaurus, right. Those are the ones yeah. that are on land, right? The ones. Mm -hmm. Then there's like the. The one in the water, yeah. Yeah, the ones in the water. Um, C4C, hello, good morning. Do you think land dinosaurs like T-Rexes got jealous of dragons because they can fly, but they can't? If they ever saw yes. one, they might. Give us a little bit of a nose. So it's just, yeah, again, it's kind of like imagine a horse head with that jaw and then putting like a lizard snout. <laughs> again, no wrong way to do a dragon because there's all kinds of flying blue Nessie. Yes. All right. And then I'm just going to fill this in. We're going to do an underside. Don't worry, but I'm just going to fill this in with the blue so it's kind of drying in between. My dragon's noses are always a little different. It's okay. Here we go. I'm okay with that. It's all going to come together. <laughs> I believe. I know it sounds like a cat poster, but I believe. It's one of my favorite quotes from the Lego movie. I've actually never seen that movie. Oh, yes. <gasps> <laughs> it's so good so funny I've never actually watched um, the Lego Batman movie and I hear that was pretty good I'd like to watch that uh, Will Arnett as Batman who'd have thought but it was perfect it's perfect things going okay I think so. 
cool. You gotta make a better jawline, more defined. Mm -hmm. Well, and something that helps too, like I said, I'm gonna go and get a little bit of that blue purplish color that we had before, a little bit of the white and everything, get a lighter version. And if I come underneath, what's really important is I don't wanna do the whole front section, but to separate the mouth, basically, the top and the bottom, I come underneath and we create that division line like mm. so. And that might help. Let me make this a little bit brighter. I know it can be kind of hard to. Might help a wee bit. Yeah. Don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's good. I think anybody looking at that would know it's a dragon. So again, we're not done with the details. You'd be surprised. It's all gonna really help. So, okay, good, we're, we're in a good place. I'm gonna continue on with that light bluish color and we're gonna go up top here on the nose. And I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it. We're gonna make like these little horn thingies. Let me get this slightly different color here so we can see. Make two of them. A little bit of a gap so it looks like there's one on the other side just like we did the legs it's kind of hard to see let me get a little closer with my camera here might help should have thought of that earlier oh no i switched my canvas that happens oh every time <laughs> every blinking time make this They are definitely very different. Yeah, Mine have very long them. horns. I just kind of kept going, and then I was like, okay, okay, okay. That's totally fine. Like, they could have been horse uh, horns. They could have been little wispies. The, the rest of the details, really, are going to be up to you. I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but, you know, you can decide, you know. Um, here we go. So I'm now, because things are drying, they're doing different things. Um, I'm going to let the head dry just a little bit and go ahead and go mm -hmm. down to the, the claws here. Okay. And I'm just going to do little white triangles, long white triangles. Mm. If you can kind of see that, it makes a difference. It helps clean things up. And it just, um, it's a little bit more brilliant because the background might have some color to it. And... It'll give the face a little bit of time to dry before we put the teeth and stuff like that on there. All these little details make the difference. That's why they say the devil's in the details. Dimash and I, hello, hello, good morning. Hope you are doing well. I have Megan from New Reviews on here. Um, I've got to do it at least one more time. If you need to know anything about Megan, here I is. am. A complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. <laughs> <laughs> she knows nothing. That's not true anymore because she's been reading comic books. So she knows at least something. What's the most interesting thing you figure, found reading comic books? Um, Just the connections between like, like the different universes mm -hmm. and the different, uh, the different worlds. Like, but I was never really aware of that. You kind of hear about it, this universe, that universe. But um, it's, it's very complicated, actually. Oh, really? Like, I have a lot. For me, it feels complicated. And I don't know where everybody's coming from. And then there's a crossover. And I'm like, what's happening? But, yeah, I'm learning. <laughs> learning slowly. Do you have, like, a favorite character or favorite universe? 
I am really very much right now. I'm really into Spider Woman. Oh, okay. I don't know what to see. I know nothing about Spider. <laughs> Um, she, this is the Jessica Drew Spider Woman from like the 50s, 60s, and she's basically kind of discovering who she truly is. Okay. It's kind of a self discovery type um, story. She learns who she really is because she's been deceived by different people. She's been deceived by Hydra and. Mm. Oh, Hail Hydra. Yes. <laughs> So she's kind of figuring out who, who she is. And okay. it's kind of a mystery in a way. Because um, she's trying to find um, about her father's history and his mysterious death. And, um, okay. Yes. Now, see, that sounds really intriguing. You wouldn't think that'd come from a uh, comic book. <laughs> um, so that idea with the claws, I'm going to take up to the teeth for the teeth. It shouldn't be too hard on the same line or excuse me, on the line where, um, the jaw, or, you know, the lower mouth, part of the mouth, the upper meat. I'm just going to make some, get some more paint on here. Make some little teeth. Make her fierce. She looks a little bit hickish at the moment. <laughs> I think I made the teeth too big. That's okay. At least she's got some. Dimajani says Jessica Drew Spider Woman actually has no connection to Peter Parker Spider Man. Interesting. Yeah, no, there's not. Oh. That's pretty cool. You kind of would have expected like them to meet, but nope, no. Yeah. Fascinating. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the eye here. I like to make the eye right about here. And you can do whatever shape. You can do a circle. Now the thing with the eyes is that the more menacing, you want it to be like small and kind of narrow. Okay. Or if you want it to be friendly, you make it round. Or you could try to kind of meet in the middle. So I'll make it kind of big, have a little bit of roundness to it, and then go back to a point. Um, we'll add the iris later, but this is kind of like a happy medium in between. Mm. And um, it starts coming a little bit more to life this way because um, it has a bit of personality to it. Um, right now it's a little bit more of a zombie eye. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay, which is totally fine. You could even leave it this way if you wanted to have, you know, that mysterious kind of villainous look to yeah. it, which is totally fine. Um, taking that white, I'm going to let all that dry a little bit more. And we're going to go to the wings here. And I'm going to add some like little claw things to the wings. Um, let's see, where's the best place to do this so you can see? Um, it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, basically just bigger versions of the claws. You don't have to do this. This is all optional. It's your painting. You don't have to if you want to. Getting down to it. But this just all kind of helps to make it look very fierce, very menacing and powerful. Pretty much everything about a dragon is supposed to be, you know, for defense um and even often like it's it's a both at the same time like it's meant to be you know a powerhouse and so just kind of just put it on there and <laughs> tim says i want to be fierce well you keep working on your your uh what is it? Your Ben Solo film thing there. He's doing some interesting work with lightsabers. Cool. Tim is a mysterious fellow. Okay. Okay, we've got some of that. So we should be pretty good with all of that. I'm gonna go dip into my blue one more time. 
to give Saphira the, the, the uh, iris again. Friendly eye, you make a circle. If you want it to be a little bit more like, you know, a lizard, make it a slit. There we go. And I'm gonna rinse off my brush, dry it off, because we're almost done. We're gonna do the rider. Now with the rider, we're still going to follow the idea of creating. This should be pretty simple because he's not very fancy. Um, it's going to be the same idea where we do like an outline, a gesture of what the, the character is, the basic structure of a human, mm. and then we just build off of that. So um, we're going to need to make the skin tone. Um, from what I understand, Aragon is in his world Caucasian. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to take some white, some yellow, and some red to kind of make a beigey whatever color you would describe skin. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and mix. Let me bring this over here and just go ahead and mix with my brush. Less red for sure. Depends on how tan we wanna make Aragon. I mean, he is a farmer, he's outside a lot, but he's also in the woods a lot. Cause he's hunting. But I'm gonna make this a little bit white, brighter. One day I'd like to do that challenge where people like actually try to paint the act and match the skin tone of their hand or something like that. Cause obviously oh. this is way too bright. Like if I look here, it's like, it's pretty nice. And I put it on my hand and I'm like, man, I would look like death run over if I was this guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But I think this, this color will work if I hold it here against, especially against Sephira. Uh, maybe not so much against the sky. Let me make it a little bit more. No, now I'm gonna make him like fake tan. That's not good. He uh, he's a little he's a little orangey pink right now. I got that. Yeah, we're we're working on it. More white, less red. You know, we're just gonna have to maybe go with it. It's not bad. It's not terrible. And again, it's not, <laughs> it's not me. It's too yellow, <laughs> but that's okay. Gets the point across. It's the generalized color of the white folk. So let me bring back the original. Here we go. Don't worry about the clothes and everything. We're going to start with the head and we just make a stick figure that goes down. A, the leg comes out just like with our, our dragon. We're just going to draw a line and then a line for the leg and the same thing with the arm. So let me get started with that. I'll go here. It's up to you to decide how big you want him to be because we don't know how big Saphira is in comparison, mm. but I'm going to find a place to put him. I think nestled a little bit above the wing would be great. So I'm just going to go ahead and make a circle. Bring that a little bit closer here. And then I'm gonna make him lean forward a little bit. So I'm going to put my line at slight angle here. Okay. And then get that one leg. It's going to be at a slight angle too because while it's up against the neck, it's going to be somewhat downward because of just the gravity and the wind. So. And um, just like our dragon, we, we then pull it back because he doesn't want to interfere with her legs. So he's going to, or her arms, so he's going to tuck his leg back this way. Got a little naked person on the back of our dragon. <laughs> How's your stick figure going? I think it's okay. Good. I'm sure it's great. Yeah. Alrighty. Okay. And then, um, I'm trying to see my original one. And then his arms. I'm going to make him just kind of come down so he's like touching her, her back here, gripping onto something. <laughs> There we go. Okay, so we're gonna let that kind of dry just a little bit, going too thick. So we've got a person. 
E. Okay, so taking this color, uh, so it depends on, uh, you can make him have a red shirt, blue shirt, whatever you want to do. I kind of gave him like a greenish brown shirt and mm. brown pants and brown boots. And then his hair is kind of like a dirty blonde color. So all of these color choices then are going to be up to you. And you can see, whoops, let me get the right angle here. You can see it's just basically going back over top of what we've just done, a slightly bigger just like his mm -hmm. shirt is just a little bit bigger because it's in the wind. And when we do his hair, it kind of goes backwards just a little bit. But we're basically yeah. leaving some exposed area for the hand and the face. Everything else gets covered up. So let me bring this back over here. So I'm going to take that color with a little bit of blue and see if I can't make some weird green colors here. Nope, that was way too much. What am I thinking? Okay. And this is the fun part about colors. You just like play with it, see what you're going to get. Right now I've got like a grayish, yellow, green color. It's not quite there yet. And this is why I always tell people when we have these, these sessions, like I always tell them to bring the primary colors. Like it would be easier if I just said, hey, you know, bring all the different kinds of uh you know, you could buy this green and that green and whatever, but I just, a lot of times people aren't artists. And so I don't want them to be bogged down with a bunch of variety of paint. But if you yeah. have the primary colors, you could create whatever color you need and want. So that's why I just always go with that. Not bad, not bad. I'm getting there. We're getting down to the end, guys. Thank you again for sticking around and hanging out. I know it's a long stream today. I haven't quite figured out the formula, guys. So bear with me. I'm going to put all the blame on Megan. It's all my fault. It's all Megan's fault. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's been, I hope everybody's been enjoying it thus far. Um, just hanging out on a Saturday. I've got a greenish color here. I'm just going to go with it. The my dragons are looking green. Yellowish turquoise, but I'm going to go with mine too. Yeah, I kind of like it. You know, they're up in the sky. The sun's shining. So here we go. I'm just going to start up here. Just kind of make it go in the wind a little bit. We've got a shirt. Let me give him some sleeves. There we go. Uh, Daniel says, just blame Megan for everything. She can take it. <laughs> Great. Inside the booth is here saying, oh my gosh, I thought you were going to be done. I was going to watch uh -huh. the rerun. I still will. I'm here though. Well, I appreciate that. I know sometimes the streams go long. Hey, we you can't say anything, Dan. Like we we go long. <laughs> we go long. Okay. Now I'm gonna create some brown. I'm gonna just kind of keep that same greenish color and just add my red and yellow to it to try to make the brown. So I don't have to necessarily start from scratch. Because I have the white in there, again, it's gonna be a little bit creamier, but I don't, I don't find it to be problematic. There we go. Camera's jiggling all over the place. I apologize. Mm -hmm. I started mixing it on my hand, and I just, it's still being mixed on my hand. <laughs> it's okay. I do that a lot too. <laughs> all right. Nice, weird, brownish color. There we go. There we go. I got it. No, <laughs> we do it the same time. <laughs> and I'm just going to come in. Paint. Paint the brown on there. 
You can't rush art, guys. You can't rush art. I mean, you could, but then we're just really not happy about it. <laughs> so. It's true. I feel like he's a little bit big. Maybe this is Saphira when she was still younger. And so exactly. Like See, you can just always build on the story. I mean, honestly, that might sound like it's cheating. It's not really, you know, until you start really figuring out how to make things look the way that you want to just kind of change the story. Um, Cause it doesn't mean it's good or bad, you know, or excuse me, bad or terrible or anything like that. Just might be, just might be different than what you thought until you can figure out how to make it the way you want it to be. Let me get a little bit more red. I'm going to change the color just slightly for for boots. It's still going to be brown, but I want it to be a little bit lighter, not much. And boots are pretty simple. I'm just going to go ahead and make the boot. There we go. Got a little shoe. Almost there. And again, his hair is that's going to be up to you what kind of color you want to make it. Um, I might take some yellow, some white, some of my beigey color. Since he's on a yellow sky now, I might need to make it a little darker. <laughs> I can't remember in the books. I told this to Megan when we were chatting back and forth. I'm like, I can't remember what color he has. In my mind, he's always blonde. Mm, yeah, but I can't actually remember if he is or not. So I'm just gonna go take it. It's up to you. What kind of hair do you want? Maybe I'll mix it up today. So this today, the earlier, you know, edition, he's got whoops, he's just kind of got a mop of hair flying in the wind. Maybe today we'll make it a little more creative. Maybe I'll give him a faux hawk. Let's see. <laughs> Let's just see. There we go. <laughs> oh, I like that better. <laughs> little darkness in there there we go and it's just a simple person a simple little human figure nothing too fancy but it's recognizable he's got longer hair for for sure <laughs> Well, not for sure, but like, you know, it's a little longer. Right. Well, I mean, again, you know, farm boy and all that kind of stuff. Not really known for having the fanciest of hair. But uh, then I'm going to rinse. Let me back this up a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush. And then now it's up to you, Megan, to decide. Let me back this way up. Leave it at that. Now it's up to you to decide if you like that you're painting the way it is, or if you feel like it needs a little bit of outlining. I don't do a lot. As you can see, some areas are not, whoops, not everything is outlined. I just did maybe the back end. Yeah. Clean it up, um, just to define, define some extra things. I personally, you know, prefer when I don't outline, but that's up to you. Kind of look at it, see what you think. See if you need to cover anything up with maybe a cloud here or there. Um, like we talked about with the tail. You know, what do you think so far? What do you think? Uh, definitely need a little bit of outlining. Okay. Do right. some of that. Okay, so I'm just going to rinse that brush. Get a little bit of black. And so like I said, I don't like to do too much. So I'm going to start. Well, I should start over here because I'm left-handed. So start with the little wing and I try not to take it too seriously. Try not to go slowly because that's where you get, you know, the choppiness. Just your painting should be dry enough that you could rest your hand on here and just kind of just go for it. Thank you. 
I just kind of pick key areas to to do that. Sounds like you're playing the bongos back there. <laughs> I totally just hit my microphone. <laughs> so funny. What do you think has been your favorite part about being on YouTube? Everybody I've met. Mm -hmm. Like, I've never been a person that, like, is really um, – has a lot of friends or like really makes a lot of friends. I never made a point mm -hmm. of making a lot of friends. Like, yeah, same here. Small circle. <laughs> yeah, like really small circle. And so it happens that like, I'm like, oh, I've made a lot of friends like this this year. Mm -hmm. And these people that I really do consider to be friends, you know? Yeah. It's so funny though, because they're all, we're all so far away from each other. Mm -hmm. But we hang out on the regular kind of. Yeah. Interesting. It, it's it's interesting this this new era of of friendship and kinship and everything like that where it's mm -hmm. like it's online. Like I know we all kind of or a lot of people you know we're afraid of that and kind of judgmental. And I, I understand why. And I don't. I still don't think it takes the place of one on one, like physical, like you know, in the in the moment action. You know, when you meet people, there is something yeah. different about that energy. But this has been pretty cool. I mean, I've met so many people and culture casino says your circle gets huge. I'm sure you probably have to filter out some of those folks. too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, for saying for me, like just being able to meet people, it's very difficult for me to meet people, make friends, that kind of stuff. But mm -hmm. here we are. And, um, you know, I, I think there's, there needs to be still some, caution you know with internet people like yeah you know i still reserve myself no matter how long i may have known somebody like until i've actually met you in person, in person. I always kind of yeah. like a li little i think a little healthy grain of of, of i don't want to say distrust because that's a heavy word but like just caution because yeah. <laughs> anybody can pretend to be anybody and so it's always like you know just make sure, you know, exercise caution until you actually meet these people. Mm -hmm. uh, this probably will be too controversial a question to ask Megan, but who's one of the cool, I say who's one of the coolest people you have met? <laughs> ah, that's, oh God. I don't <laughs> what a squeal. Ah! <laughs> Uncorn question. That's why I said one of, one of. Oh, I didn't say the one? most just one of they do it like like act like met like in real life of yeah in real life? person since you've done the meetup i've never done anything like that and but by the way dimaj and i i'm not sure it'd be kind of cool uh to go to the go to florida again but um i just don't know i get i get awkward, <laughs> I get awkward. The thing oh is, i could be I've we could be I awkward with megan a lot of people are just as awkward as me yeah and we kind of find each other yeah yeah to sit in a corner and talk yeah exactly that's what i told elijah when she was on the channel we were talking about it like yeah we just just you just find your awkward people and you just hang out and that's just totally what we ended up doing mm -hmm. what i found i don't know if it, like one of my i don't want to say favorite i hate saying favorites but like right. what i thought was cool was all these people i had been hanging out with online mm-hmm and then of the people that I met and did hang out with, like, Alasia and Johnny, and I got to meet Ryan and, and Jay, oh, um, cool. they, they are very much who, who they are. Like, mm -hmm. like, you could tell there was nobody was pretending otherwise. Right. I That's mean, nice. And we talked about it, too, that, like, when you're on, when you're on a show, you kind of are, like, on like you're it's not you're putting on some sort of a performance Pers not like yeah. fake but you're more yes uh, bu bubbly than like say you usually are in real life exactly or, like like ryan kennel's thing is like he's kind of like aggressive comments or whatever yeah but in real life when you meet him he doesn't do that to your face like in right. he's not angry all the time no. <laughs> he's, a decent he's actually really really sometimes. nice yeah it's, it is. I mean, part of YouTube really is entertainment value. And so, yeah, you do kind of need to. I mean, like, 
I try to be as honest and, and, and truthful and everything like that when I present myself. But I mean, like yeah. I've already said, like I have a hard time with people. I talk because I hate awkward silence. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, but here we go. I have finished my painting. I've done the grand reveal. I took mm -hmm. off the paint. So I've got some nice edges there. Um, I've got some splotches that I didn't mean to have. We'll just pretend that that's like a bug. Um, <laughs> flying up there i totally have a splotch at the bottom too well we can always flies. cover that with a cloud or two wait we're gonna yeah. do a grand reveal or are you i i think i guess i would probably go in after this and like refine it things. let's have a look <gasps> oh i totally like the dragon head you made more than mine and your clouds they look like they're so far away see my dragon it looks like she's not too far away from the clouds yours mm. look like she's further away and that is so good so good megan <laughs> hand claps all around do you like it yes this was really fun Excellent. i probably would not have attempted something like this by myself <laughs> Well, and the great thing is, too, like, you know, there's going to be some elements. Like, I look at my dragon and wish I could have done something differently. But once you know how to do something, you can yeah. always try it again. So if you really want to do, like, a hardcore Aragon kind of painting, uh, you could always do it again. Now we know we've broken down the elements, you know, what it takes, that simple line structure, basically a skeletal structure, and then just build off from that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, that was that's really good I, I i'm so glad that you were able to make it today um so glad i hate that you've been having power outages and i'm just what? making me worry for winter i'm like great <laughs> right i know so everybody don't like everybody invite megan onto your channel right now and then just it's at your mercy if you want to invite her <laughs> no <laughs> uh, everybody's saying it looks great it's nice Aww, well done yeah. they're giving hand claps zombie box reviews hello thank you for coming we are down to the end of it we hit just the three hour mark cool i uh, you know it's a wild wild road well i am so glad you were able to make it here i'm so glad i was able to learn more about you and uh, I i'll think I'll think about October. That would be kind of cool. We need yeah. to be able to meet some of these people in real life. Like Megan seems like my people. <laughs> so. I really met my people being here on, on, on YouTube. So it's really fun. Excellent. Well, um, of course, be sure to wash your brushes. You know, wash your brushes, warm soap, water, all that stuff. <laughs> like that. You're going to head out. But again, thank you so much, Megan, for being here. Um, and uh just this was really fun helps push me out of my comfort zone as well and i'm appreciative for people being able to let me teach youtubers how to paint looking for some more people culture casino i could teach you anything hit me up man i will teach you how to paint anything <laughs> yeah i do it uh yeah so anyway guys i hope you have a fantastic rest of the saturday enjoy your weekend be sure again to hit that like and thank you um again as always just Thank you. If I was watching this video, I would like it. I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also